Hello everyone in peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have a good time sharing some education together. Uh, actually, I was going to answer somebody, but then I did watch some of his videos. I remember him. This guy is a poor guy, you know, like I don't want to make fun of him. He might hurt himself. So I changed the topic and uh, because, uh, you know, in one of his videos, he mentioned uh, that Muhammad, if Muhammad uh, is advising the Muslims, uh, if Muhammad, uh, Muslims today, he's saying, Muslim today, they don't insist of circumcision. And then he said, if Muhammad was not circumcised, uh, that would not make him uh, uh, from Ishmael, which means he thinks that Muhammad was circumcised. Nowhere in Islamic tradition, anywhere, it says that Muhammad ever been circumcised. However, let us leave this uh, poor guy these days, anyone can grow a beard and, you know, his hair go crazy and he think he is Einstein. But Einstein is only Einstein. There is no true Einstein. Um, otherwise, being bald or having crazy hair doesn't make you Einstein. Uh, we hear always in Christian churches, not only between Muslims, uh, many ignorant who they say uh, that Ishmael, he is the father of the Arab. And sadly, I say ignorant because you might hear someone he is even a priest saying that. First of all, the word Arab is not even an ethnic. The word Arab is a word mean people of the desert. Whoever live in the desert, he is an Arab. As simple as that. In other words, it's the same as the word you use for Bedouin. So when you say Bedouin, you mean Arab. When you say Arab, you mean the Bedouin. Uh, low value maybe from your side because from my side it's very good is my voice good guys increase the value hmm. all right let us see we will check the setting sound is weak interesting okay let me check why <clears throat> This is what happened when you have four wives and you are a prophet and then your wives became 13 and 14 and you know the wives they play with the with the things you have i mean like your microphone etc i told them don't even get close there but what you can do i mean give me a second please it's not easy to be a prophet these days now the muslim they will say christian prince claim to be a prophet <laughs> uh, yeah the one who will do that is the, the best video editor mimi hijab <laughs> did you say that did you say you're a prophet <laughs> no abdul i was joking <laughs> however if muhammad can be a prophet i mean anyone can be a prophet let me prophesy some of the prophecy of your prophet uh, there's a joke about uh, Muhammad where a guy he came to him and he says my wife she is going to deliver a baby what do you think is going to be uh, Muhammad he said deliver it no uh, deliver and you know he did not answer then the guy he uh, his wife she delivered the baby and he came to the Prophet and he said to him, Prophet, my wife should deliver a baby. Uh, the Prophet said, it must be a boy. The guy, he said, no. The Prophet then, he said, it must be a girl. And then the Bedouin, he was amazed how the Prophet was able to find out. Now let us see how we can make the sound better. Okay, now is the sound stronger from your side? Is the sound better? I'm afraid if I make it louder, you guys might go deaf. Is it good now? Am I heard? Hello, hello. All right. Is the sound good or no? Is it so strong? Good, no? loud and clear okay so the question is is Ishmael from the Arab you see for me 
uh, once actually I have an argument with someone uh, is in uh, uh, Middle Eastern Christian and you know we grow in the Middle East and we hear things and you know we go to school and you know we are like we don't want to use the word brainwash but it's somehow it is like this because we grow up in a society and we take for granted what we hear nobody want to go study investigate uh, I before I start actually uh, I, I decide to show an article written by a bishop an Aramaic bishop who speak Ar uh, Aramaic fluently and this is his language actually he's an Aramaic bishop uh, let me see if I can put the image for you here the article give me a second please uh, now the article in Arabic but doesn't matter really we can share the link and you can use Google translation from your side and you can search actually the article yourself and you can read it now I am not trying to prove my point from an article but those people they don't say things unless it is accurate uh, here American Foundation for Syriac Studies and in order to be teaching in such an organization you have to be the top and the guy is a bishop for millions of people uh, you go there and you will see where he is explaining the word Arab and Arobo let me zoom in it says here Al Arab كلمة سامية قديمة معناها سكان الصحراء أو البيضاء. The word Arab mean it's a, it's a, 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 a you know from the Sami uh, origin from Sam and from the language of Sam and mean the inhabitants of the desert or uh, uh, you know بيضاء is like you know there's a desert and there's the 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 one it's in the way to be a desert or you are getting closer to the desert as get like uh, you will see some green but it's not desert yet so those people who live in those places they call them Arab it is not a nation whoever live in the desert he is an Arab all right so uh, and you know all the origin of, of the uh, of the word is not even Arabic <laughs> which is funny I mean it's not even the Arab who called themselves Arab I mean those who live in the desert it was the Aramaic people and here you see uh, how funny it is that now today you have a name people use and you call yourself but in fact the one who gave you the name it was not uh, you it was the Aramaic now the word Arab, by the way, is not only mean or doesn't mean only people who live in the desert. It means people who they are savage. So it's kind of like uh, if somebody he did not take a shower for long, you know, like eh, he's a better way, you know. So this is Arab. Uh, it can be used even for someone who is not an Arab as as a way to describe his situation, let us say. Uh, and here he's explaining to us how the words came to 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 the existence today. All right, uh, you can search. Uh, actually, I'm going to post the link for you guys. Give me a second. Uh, let me copy the link. I will post it for you in the chat. So you guys can use Google Translation from your side and you can uh, translate. Someone saying, Louis with Nini. Our friend, this Nini is an idiot. He don't even have high school bring me somebody you know uh, when i talked to him we were in a chat room and he agreed that your prophet have boom boom with the goat i mean what are you talking about boom boom with the goat he agreed go go and watch the you know the conversation between me and him and the muslims then they, they they were making fun of him attacking him badly for what he did so you are an idiot and actually i i think it is you who is mentioning his name because his name nobody mentioned except himself now so here in in uh, in this this study is showing us where the word Arab is coming from. Have nothing to do with a nation. Arab are not a nation. It's a mix of people who they are. Actually, even if you go and search uh, in the Hebrew, you will you will find the word Arab uh, uh, mean mix the mix the mingle. You know the one is mixed. 
it's not the one who they are pure you know pure in which way uh, we are losing internet very good uh oh all right i hope we are not going to lose the internet let me see Ah, this is what happened. My internet. I hope we are back. Okay, I think now we are back. So, uh, even if you search in the Hebrew, you will find what I'm talking about. However, still this is, might be not convincing for some people because they are arrogant and they don't want to listen. Right? If you don't want to listen, then nobody can convince you of anything. Okay. Uh, but this is the origin of the language and this is what uh, you know what, what the reality is like as an example Aramaic it was a title or a word given you know where you live where you live it's where you, being, where you will be called as an example Aramaic is the children of Aram and Aram or Aramaic is, is a name of those who live in a high land. As you see, so the Aramaic are people who live in the high land, and uh, the Arab are people who they are mixed, many ethnic groups. They live in the desert and they are desert people. Now, let us see here some reference from the Bible. You know, always the Muslims, they try to show you things, you know, they claim that uh, Muhammad is from Ishmael, but if there is anywhere in the Quran it says that? Nowhere. How come? You see, how come the Quran, as an example, mention, like as an example, chapter 29, verse number 27, that Allah, he gave Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and from his seeds, the prophethood. Okay, why Allah mentioned? Because if this is the book made by Allah, so the one is talking here is Allah. Right, which is we know it's Muhammad. So why Muhammad here he dropped Ishmael? If Muhammad is claiming to be from Ishmael, shouldn't Muhammad mention the first, the, the eldest in the family? How in the world you drop the most important child? For he is the older or the elder. You see, even in the Middle East today, they call you the father. You, if you go to Muslim chat room, everybody is Abu, 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 Abu means father of. So the first child you have is going to be your name, even the name of the guy. They will call him Abu. Let us say you have a child. His name is Yasser Qadri, the father of Yasser Qadri. If Yasser is the older in the family, they will call his father Abu Yasser. So Ibrahim, based in the Middle Eastern tradition, he should be the father of Ishmael, not the father of Isaac. I mean, as a name. Because Ishmael is the elder. So look what happened here. The Quran skip Ishmael and mention Isaac, Isaac and Jacob. And then after mentioning those two names, says from his seeds will be the prophethood. Where is Ishmael? You know what I mean? From the seed of Abraham, what the Quran chose to mention? Two names. Where is the third? The Muslim, they will say, will Ishmael mention later? But this verse says, from the seed of Abraham, and mention two names, not the three names, from those seeds will be the prophethood, according to the verse, chapter 29, verse 27. Yet the Muslims will not accept. They will say, this is not enough proof. Okay, let us go to Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari is a Muslim book, and Muslims will say, now what? They will say, uh, Sahih al-Bukhari made by a Christian prince made by the Jews. Look what it says. This is the Muslims reporting the story and according to Muhammad himself, it's not us, it's not me, you know. Those are story narrated from Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, who Muhammad, you know, named him as the scholar of the nation, right? And then you will see that it's Muhammad who mentioned those stories and they are copying from Muhammad what he said. The Prophet said, this is the source of tradition of walking people between between uh, them, as-Safa and Marwa. And here Muhammad is speaking about fabrication, about 
the wife of Abraham, which is Hajar, and the wife and the, and the, and her son. And look what happened here. Muhammad he confirmed, and his followers they confirm that Ishmael he do not know Arabic. Read carefully. So they settled there, and later on on they sent for their family who come to settle with them. So this uh, some of families become permanent residents there. The child, i.e. Ishmael, grew up and learned Arabic from them. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid statement after this? Somebody will say to you that Ishmael is an Arab. He is the father of the Arab, but he learned Arabic from the Arab. Do you see it? Imagine I go to Indonesia and I am 11 years old and then I learn Indonesian from the Indonesia from the Indonesian and then I am the father of the Indonesian <laughs> you know what I mean so even their books proving that this statement or this this theory is a joke is you know Muhammad is a fraud all his what he's trying to do he wanted to try to get some legitimacy to be uh, uh, from Abraham like I am not from the middle of nowhere I am from Abraham like hello but it's obvious that this is stupid I mean the guy uh, I'll go to Germany now I stay there for six months I learn German and then I am the father of the German but the German are already there and I'm, I'm learned their language from them which means there's a nation there's a language established there's people who speak such a language and then I go there and I learn Arabic and then I became their father all right uh, so it's very silly and very stupid argument when they say such a statement and actually you can see more reference in my books about uh, Ishmael being the father of the Arab and here in the same time you know if I am from Ishmael does that make me a prophet and no I mean do we inherit prophecy I mean <laughs> If my father is a prophet, I will be a prophet too. No, it's about God. You know, he chose people like, you know, not from everyone from Israel. He became prophet. There's chosen people by God who they became prophet, regardless who they are, their fathers. But they are from the children of Israel. Muhammad is not from the children of Israel. And Muhammad is not from Abraham for sure. Number two, uh, Ishmael, he did marry an Egyptian woman. Let me find some reference. All right. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 21, verse number 21. Very easy to remember, 21, 21. You will see here that he settled Ishmael in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother arranged for him to marry a woman from the land of Egypt. So, look what happened now. Ishmael, his father, is an Aramaic man, coming all the way from Iraq. His mother is Egyptian. The wife of Ishmael is Egyptian too. So how he became the father of the Arab? <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you see what? Uh, this? Do you see what I'm talking about? So now we have more confirmation that there's no way, even he did not even, he had nothing to do with the Arab. Even though, by the way, the word Arab means people who live in the desert, doesn't mean an ethnic, as I say. But if we claim, if we, if we say, okay, they are ethnic, somehow they became ethnic. But even, I mean, why, why the Jews? I mean, before, long before Muhammad exists. So the book of Genesis is written way before, before Muhammad even was in the belly of his mother. Why the Jews want to write such a thing if, I mean, why why they want to lie about it? You know what I mean? So he married an Egyptian woman, and there is then now the all the options of having children who they are Arab is gone. The Arab himself, Muhammad himself, the Sahih Hadith confirm that Ishmael, he learned Arabic from the Arab. And if you marry from the Arab, even if you marry from the Arab, does not make your children Arab. The, the children will follow their father. You know what I mean? As an example, Musa himself, he married a, a Bedouin woman. Bedouin from the desert. Doesn't make the, you know, we can say they are Arab like as Bedouin. You know, we remember that 
the word Arab means people of the desert. So, but doesn't mean that children of Moses are Arab. Otherwise, we would say Moses are children are Arab too. So this is a very silly argument. But as you see, even the Bible confirmed that uh, Ishmael he did marry from an Egyptian woman. Then, if we go, we will find more more reference in Genesis twenty. Uh, 8 verse number 9 you will notice that uh, Ishmael, Ishmael he lived very close to his brothers to the point they are marrying from his daughter as an example if he is living far away they will not even know that he have a daughter you know we are not living in the 20th century where you can take a plane and you go there or people speak in the internet if, Muhammad, if Ishmael was living in Mecca, it's going to take them maybe a month or so before they can arrive there. And then if we go to more verses in the Bible, we will see Genesis chapter 25, verse number 10. We will find uh, that Abraham, uh, this is about the barrier of Sarah where Sarah was located. Here you will see the death of Abraham. His son Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave. So Ishmael and Isaac, they were in the barrier, in, in, the, in, the, in the funeral of Abraham. Think about it. If Ishmael was living in Mecca, and then in order for the news to come to Ishmael, it needed a month to come to him. And then he needed another month to come and attend the funeral. <laughs> but he was in the funeral. You know what I mean? That's mean Ishmael, he don't live far away. Maybe a day or two from where Abraham he lived. Uh, remember, I mean, at that time, they cannot, live a, uh, they cannot let a dead person stay for long for he will smell bad and you know, things will go really wrong. They have to bury him as fast as possible. So when we say that his sons, Isaac and Ishmael, they buried him, that's mean they are there. And that's mean Ishmael is very close. So how that can be that he was in Mecca? Mecca is like 1,200 mile, I think, maybe like 1,400 kilometer from where Abraham was. You know what I mean? So in order for Ishmael to take a camel or a donkey or whatever, if you want to cross the desert, you have to take a camel. The donkey cannot survive it. Uh, even a horse will, will, you know, you have to take a lot of water with you. There's no water in the way. Uh, so if you take a camel, you know, how long is it going to take the, the camel to be, to be there? So all those things, you know, I mean, there's tons of, uh, we can share endless reference about uh, Ishmael and where Ishmael, he lived. Uh, you know, Ishmael, according to the Bible, there's many places where it's, uh, you know, shown us uh, where uh, where Ishmael, uh, you know, literally he lived. Uh, let me see if I can find a map. Give me a second. Actually, the map, uh, it was open. I closed it. Okay, let us see where we can find the map. Yep. All right, this is the wilderness of Paran. I mean, it's far away from Mecca. This is in Sinai. And the brothers of Ishmael, they were living around. They were living in that area. So they are not far really from each other. Somebody will say that the Bible says uh, uh, that children of Ishmael, they will be a great nation. My friend, a great nation does not mean, uh, you know, I mean, uh, the Bible mentioned many, even small number of nations, they will be great nation. Great nation is about, there's something great about them. Let us say something, uh, not necessarily great as good, it can be great as uh, influence. But in the case of Ishmael, nothing bad about Ishmael actually, and some people think, that when the Bible says that Ishmael will be a wild man, 
that's mean those are the Muslims and the Muslims look at them they you know first of all Muslims 95% of them aren't not even Arab they are not you know the Arab is a very small tiny minority between the Muslims uh, secondly the Arab themselves they are not Arab which means they are not really one ethnic they are a mix of, uh, of uh, uh, let me see let me see if I can do that hold on give me a second <clears throat> You know, we try always uh, to make uh, our statement facts, not just talk. Talk is cheap, right? Let us see. Okay. All right. Let us look here. The word Arab. What the word Arab mean in the Hebrew language? Do you see how the word come? Mix, mingles, mix together, mingle self, mix. Aramic, cons uh, corresponding to Arab, to mingle mingle self mix all right so uh, uh, it's a mix uh, the arab are mixed people you know and uh, there is people who they have uh, very i mean if you look if you look at the people of yemen who claim to be uh, arab they have nothing to do as a look with the people who live in saudi arabia people of yemen they are short most of the Bedouin, they are taller, way taller. People of Yemen, they have a totally different character. And people, actually, if I show you a picture of those who supposedly are called Arab today. Give me a second. You will find that they have nothing, nothing to do with each other. So. As an example, the king of Jordan, he claimed to be an Arab, supposedly, and he's from Mecca, right? What, what about this guy? He have a blue eyes. <laughs> anyway, let us see. I'm trying just to find a picture, like a little bit a clear picture. Uh, I'm searching. Just give me a second. There's many pictures, but none of them are, uh, you know, close to the face, so we can see the difference. Let us see this picture here. This is the King of Jordan, and those are next to him, they are Saudi. Anyone notice any things they share? Nothing. <laughs> Now, somebody will say to you, well, the king of Jordan, his mother, she is a, a, a bridge. doesn't matter anyway. You know, people of Jordan look different. The more they are, you know, I mean, Saudi, they look different. They are taller. They are skinnier. They have different build. And not all Saudi are the same, you know, depend on the location, which, which territory you live in. Every territory have different look, have different even accent. And even Muhammad, he mentioned that... Uh, his people will not be capable to read the Quran in one letter, if you remember. Why? <laughs> because those are mixed. They are not Arab. You know, there's nothing called really Arab. Each one of them have his own potato language. So, uh, let us see here. <clears throat> this is the uh, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia and later he will be the king 
and the other one is a ruler from uh, uh, from Emirat. Now you look at them, maybe both they are dressing like Arab, but I mean as Bedouin people, but they have totally different look. Their eyes is different, their nose is different, their mouth is different. Everything about even their build is different. Everything about them is different. So you can tell they are totally different people. Let us see another one. This is the Prince of Qatar. The second you look at him, you will find yourself looking at someone from Pakistan. Because simply he is. All those people there, most of them, they are coming from India, Pakistan specifically. Let us get a close look. Give me a second. All right. This is the father. If you see him, he is not wearing Arabian clothes. If you see him in the street in Pakistan, are you going to recognize him that he is not a Pakistani person? No way. It's impossible. Right? All those people, they are coming from, because they are, you know, uh, Pakistan is very close, by the way. It's just, uh, you know, like a few hours by, by, by the boat, you will be there. Uh, it's, it's almost close, across the border. Uh, their, their, even their tradition, their food, their... Uh, look, this is, the, this is the Prince of Qatar right now. Isn't it? This is a guy from Pakistan. So how those Arab, they look different. I mean, each one of them is coming from different galaxy why they are not looking the same you know what I mean if when we say Arab we are talking about ethnic group if this ethnic group let us say uh, mixed and the majority of it is not from that group no more then we cannot call them by that group anymore uh, let us show you another one Okay, look at this one. I mean, what does this guy have to do with the Arab? Anyone have an idea? He have a blue eyes. He's blonde. You know, if this guy, he walk in Europe, you would think he is European like everybody. Right? Okay, how this person became an Arab? Look at his wife. Okay, how this wife is an Arab? You, you know what I mean? So what does Arab mean exactly? I mean, when they say Arab, it's a, it's a joke. There's nothing it's called. Like when I say Arab, I mean that originally we are people coming from certain area as desert, but it's a mixed area with many ethnic, nobody knows actually who they are, where they're coming from. It's a big mix. Egyptian are not Arab. This guy is Syrian, is not an Arab. Uh, uh, the king of Morocco isn't Arab. They are Moroccan. They are African. What, how, what make them Arab? You know, imagine, even the Muslim confirm that 4,000 Muslims occupied Egypt. At that time, there was 4 million Egyptian. You believe it? Uh, somebody will say, how 4,000 can occupy 4 million? Those Egyptian, they are farmers. They are not warriors. And they were controlled by, you know, a little number of Roman for centuries. And the Egyptian give up. Nobody can fight the Roman. And they have no power to fight them. They have no army. They have no leader. They have nothing. The Muslims came. So the 4,000 Arab, they make the whole Egyptian, the 4 millions Arab. It's impossible. But this is what happened always. Islam come. Everybody want to attach himself to the one who is victorious. Who is the victorious? The Arab. So it's better for you to say, I'm an Arab. 
Otherwise, you will be not an Arab, and then people will make fun of you. You will not be first-class citizen. And this is why Arab became, it's like saying, I am a superior, I'm an Arab. When, when Osama bin Laden, he went to Pakistan, and he went to Afghanistan, he, right away he became a leader. Why? He's an Arab, and he's coming from Saudi Arabia. That alone is, is, a, is a big deal. He's not a Pakistani, he is not an Afghani, he's an Arab. It's a big shot for them. This is why if you, if you go to Indonesia, when they got a sheikh, he's coming from any, uh, what they call it, Arab countries, like he's like a superstar there. He's an Arab. You know what I mean? Like a big, big shot. Uh, so that made many people, they, you know, they try to make themselves join such a name, even though this name does not have nothing to do with any ethnic even the Arab themselves, as I say, they are not even an ethnic. Same for Muhammad. Muhammad in the beginning, the Arab, they were just Bedouin. They have nothing really to be proud about. So Muhammad, what he can be proud about? Nothing. So he decided to join the one who they are the most honorable. Who are they? Abraham, Isaac. You know what I mean? When you don't have a family, you try to find one. If you don't have, you know, you want to claim to be a king, Okay, you are the son of who? You want to be a prince? Who is your father? Which king? So Muhammad was desperate trying to find a person he belonged to so he can claim something he don't have. And that was Abraham. It was a solution. All right? So Abraham was a solution for Muhammad, not a true inheritance or let us say lineage. And as you see, even the Muslims, even Muhammad himself in his story, he mentioned that Abraham, when he had his son Ishmael, he went to Arabia, according to Muhammad, and to Mecca, according to Muhammad, and there was nobody there, according to Muhammad. But here we go, we find that he went there and he found the Arab there. And actually, according to Islamic history, if you find my book, if you read my book, you will find that he married from the tribe of Jerham. And, uh, you know, Jerham is the enemy of Muhammad, how he became the father of them. So all this fabrication is just to give Muhammad some papers. Papers, who is your father? Actually, I believe Muhammad, nobody knows who is really his father. For me, I'm just guessing. I think it was Waraq ibn Nawfal. You know, if you have my book, you will see that when Muhammad's father, supposedly the one Muslim claimed that he's the father of Muhammad, he was going to have sex with the, uh, 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 with the mother of Muhammad, uh, uh, the sister of Waraqa, she offered Muhammad father 100 camel to sleep with her. Now, the story here is very fishy. I mean, 100 camel to sleep with her? Secondly, that means Muhammad's father was a, a, jig a jigalo guy, you know, like you get paid for sex. So, when the Muslim they mention those stories in their books, that Waraq ibn Nawfal's sister, she offered 100 camel when he was going to have sex with the mother of Muhammad. And then Muhammad's father, after he finished with the mother of Muhammad, he came to her, she said to him, I do not need you no more. She changed her mind. So it looked like she was sent by her brother Waraka trying to convince him to stay away from this woman by offering money. And when he did not stay away, the offer is gone. No more money, no more camels. And imagine 100 camel in that time is a lot of money. I mean, it's now it's a lot of money. So imagine at that time that will make you make you really rich. Uh, same time. Islamic books prove that Muhammad was born four years after his father's death, which is very stupid even to, to mention that this guy, he is, his name is Abdullah, and he is the father of Muhammad. And Abdullah, he died, and then his wife, four years after, she gave a birth to a son. You see, the father and the son both, they have, they have, they supposedly they have sex with two women in the same night. So, when we say when we see the muslim they say that uh, muhammad and his uncle they are the fruit of sexual relationship in one night 
So how Muhammad was born four years if Muhammad father was dead three months after? So to make it simple, let us say there is two guys. They have sex with two women in this night. And then one of them, he died after three months or let us say six months. And then after four years, the one who died, his, the woman he slept with, she gave birth. That is Muhammad. See? So everything is against Muhammad. We don't know who is Muhammad. When the Muslim even they say that Muhammad, his father, his name is Abdullah. How his name is Abdullah, but he don't believe in Allah. How his name is Abdullah, but he will go to hell. You know what I mean? If the guy, his name is Abdullah, why he is going to go to hell? Slave of Allah. Right? Muhammad, he confirmed that his father is in fire. So, what I believe that the real name of Muhammad is unknown in the Middle East. If somebody is unknown, we say Abdullah Fulan, which means uh, uh, unknown slave of Allah, unknown person. Abdullah is a name, is a title you give it to somebody, is it supposedly unknown as a person? We don't know. All right. I ask a man, ask, where is my father? Messenger of Allah said, Your father in hell. When he turned his back, he said, my father and your father in hell. <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> uh, of his mother and his uncle. No, no, you guys, you are mixing things up. No, I'm saying, okay. I made a video about it, you can go and search it, about Muhammad was born four years after the birth of his father, but the, the death of his father. What happened, that family, you know, the family, they go and they get married in the same night. So let us say, I am, let us say, 70 years old. My son is 40 years old. We go and we get married in the same night, from the same family, even sisters. You know what I mean? And then what happened, that... I die and then the woman I slept with was supposed to be my wife four years after she gave birth so this is what happened are you getting the point so both of them they have a children's but one of them is four years older than the other one so the child which is not from the, the son of Muhammad was born four years four years before Muhammad was born but Muhammad's father was dead already. How that can happen then? You know what I mean? Uh, anyway. Uh, so you see all the reference proving to us that this is a fraud. This is additional fraud of Muhammad being claiming to be from Ishmael. And why Muhammad in the Quran did not get a verse from his God saying, I am from Ishmael? Why in the Quran does it mention that? Maybe Muhammad never mentioned even that, you know, maybe this is uh, later, the Muslim, they add those stories to their books. Right? Well, I mean, it's, it's adultery anyway. I mean, at that time, if you have my book, Sex and Allah, you will see how the Arab used to live. How many of you have the book? So, you will see that the Arab, they use even to exchange wives. Even the Quran mentioned that, you know. Uh, uh, the Quran, when the wives of Muhammad, they made an, uh, like a revolution against him. What the Quran, uh, you know, uh, threatened them, that Muhammad will exchange them. How you can exchange women? Change or exchange? In Arabic, it says exchange. You bet deal. Mubadala. I give you, you give me. So, what the Arab used to do when 
like you go to this guy you say you know what even sometimes not it not not a permanent exchange like temporary like you are bored from your wife so you go to this guy you say to him can i have your wife for like a month or two and you take my wife for a month or two so the exchange so look what the what, what the quran is saying uh but if you back up each other against him huh? this is the wives are going against muhammad here it says allah will give him in exchange a concert better than you so what will happen here muhammad is going to give his wives to somebody else and he will take somebody else's wives it's an exchange. Now the Muslim they say it's a lie, etc. Go and read the history of the Arab. It's an exchange. He didn't say he would divorce you. Huh? He says it may be he would divorce you, or huh? And there is an exchange will happen, which means this is permanent exchange. A divorce would exchange permanently. No way to come back. The word in Arabic, you know, if you go, uh, let us see. <clears throat> Give me a second. Actually, even in their translation, they are, you know, this time they are, they are saying, it means exchange. So we do not need to use this. Uh, yeah, you see here, this is, this is the Muslim website. You can point your mouse over the website and it, it says here, what is the meaning of the word? He will substitute for him. Hmm. Even in the other translation, it says exchange. Here they change it. <laughs> anyway, so the Arab they used to do that. You know, there is many kind of relationship between the Arab. Even sometime, if you have, uh, if you want to have a son, and from a noble family, from a good blood. So what do you do? You send your wife. To a man who is very well known to be good or maybe he is very good looking or etc so you send his your wife to sleep with that guy she stay with him for a week or two until she you know she get what she want a baby from him and then she will deliver a baby and the baby will be to the uh, the original husband this is why muhammad actually in the hadith he did not come with something new he is copying what the arab they do as an example Muhammad, he says, the child is for the one who owned the bed. Do you see it? The boy is for the owner of the bed. Who is the owner of the bed? The husband. If the woman, she sleep with someone else, the child still is not for that man. It's the one who owned the bed. Do you see it? Which means, if God forbid your wife, she sleep with somebody, and you are a Muslim, and now you know that this is not your son according to islam you cannot say he's not my son because you own the bed and according to islam the real father cannot say this is my son for he don't own the bed do you see it and here you see a very stupid rule because now imagine if a guy his wife she was sleeping around and he found that she is sleeping around and uh, the wife she gave birth to a daughter but this is not his daughter this is not his daughter and now this he knew that this daughter is from the guy who was sleeping with his wife what do you think he can do to her if he's if he's an evil man you know what i mean so what muhammad here established which the arab used to do is very 
ugly. Because the man, he might now seek revenge from the man who was sleeping with his wife and maybe rape the daughter, which is not his daughter anyway. And Muhammad, he taught even the opposite. If you go in the Quran where it says, وَجَعَلْنَهُ نَصَبًا وَصِهْرًا and read the interpretation, you will find that the Muslims agree in chapter 25, verse number 54, that if a man, Islam only consider marriage as a relation for lineage, which means if a man have a daughter and she is not from marriage, he can sleep with her. And I change any Muslim to say I'm lying. This is what it says in their books. We can show the reference right now as we speak. All right? So if a Muslim, he have a girlfriend, and his girlfriend, she delivered to him a child with his, his, his son or his daughter, legally, according to Islam, you know, she is not his daughter. Because daughter is only a daughter of a marriage. The Quran confirmed it is not lawful for you to sleep with your daughters. So let us make it clear. Quran saying you cannot have sex with your daughters. But who said that those daughters are daughters in Islam? Which means if it's only from marriage, she is considered as a daughter. This is why a child from a daughter in Islam or fornication is not considered as a son or a daughter and they don't carry even the name of the father and they don't deserve a child support and they cannot even uh, inherit any penny from their father all right do we have any muslim he don't agree Armani, he is saying, okay, let us show you how Muslims they try to refute me. They cannot refute me, so they say, either they edit my video like Mimi Hijab, potato, or they say this. Why I want to debate, they are asking, why you don't call him, correct him? He said, why I want to debate with delusion person? My friend, perfect. I like what you said. A delusionate person. Isn't it this is your prophet? He used to imagine things happen to him, but they never happen, including having sex. So if you are not willing even to talk to me because you, are you call me delusionate, so how you follow Muhammad? Huh? And now he will try to change the topic. Here we go. This is your prophet. You must times confirm that your prophet is a bewitched man. What does that mean? He's possessed. Bewitched. So he began to imagine that he had done a thing which in fact he did not. Like what? Like what? Like what? Huh? Like sex. I mean, imagine your prophet is delusional to the point even his sex is fake. Even his sex have no witnesses. His wife was not there. So when you speak about something, this is why they don't dare to debate me, by the way, because whatever they say, I will I will give them the spank they deserve. You do not need a link, my friend. Always, anytime you, you want to find something, just type a few words you see in the screen. You can freeze the video. Search. Was bewitched, so he's that began to imagine. You know, if you search it in, in Google, you will find the same reference. All right? Or I'm showing the hadith here. It's Sahih Bukhari one three one seven five. And Muhammad, even not not only this. I mean, even his sex was fake. Read carefully. This is his wife. She was saying the following: the prophet continued for such and such a period of time, imagining that he had sexual intercourse with his wives, but in fact he did not. Yes, sir, Kadri, debate me. My friend, isn't it a shame that you are using a name of somebody else? All right. Don't do that. Grow up. Do we have any Muslim have any comment about what we said, anything we said? Now, here, if you notice, 
if Muhammad his sexual relationship it was imagination so how we can trust this guy that he saw an angel how we can trust that this guy he been squeezed by an angel because obviously he was squeezing his wife too when he was imagining <laughs> he was squeezing many things I'm not going to count them how come Muhammad did not notice that he was squeezing something not this for sure had nothing to do with his wives I don't know what he was squeezing but he was squeezing something all right so and here you see the hypocrisy the Muslim they try to attack me by saying things I mean, a Christian prince is a blah 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 say whatever you want I am not a prophet you can call me whatever names you want who care I don't really care for all what you say about me you don't even know who I am so the second we show them what is in the screen, they try to change the topic. Anyone can tell me how in the world this person can be trusted. You see, when I was in the army and I finished my service, I was leaving. There was a guy, like there's an office you go to, to, to do the papers before you leave. There was a guy next to me. He said to me, I said, oh, are you done? He says, well, no, they released me. I said, well, what's wrong? He said, uh, he hear voices. The guy, he looked fine. I mean, he didn't look like a crazy person, but he hear voices. He, he admit he hear voices. And that is in the army is very dangerous, you know. So, uh, even as a soldier, you cannot work in, in the post office. You cannot work. Muhammad cannot be, cannot fit to work anywhere. If you tell this story, you cannot even be a witness in the court. A judge will not accept you to witness even for a guy he took a zucchini. Because obviously you imagine things. You know what I mean? So how how you can be trustworthy? The guy, their own. I mean, the funny is that this is their own books saying that. Who is saying that? Aisha. I mean, first hand witness. Is that an authentic story? Yes, this is Sahih Bukhari. How this guy can be a prophet? How you can trust that this guy he saw anything? And look, since he mentioned that how he cannot debate me because I am illusionate, he don't talk about illusionate no more. Look, he's so quiet now. What is your opinion, Arami, Aramani? You just gave me your opinion and you get busted. Let's see if there, if we have a, a, a growing up Muslim here in the chat. Anyone, any Muslim want to say anything? Any Muslim have a comment? So as you see, Muhammad have nothing to do with Ishmael. Even in the Muslim books, Ishmael he learned Arabic from the Arab, from Sahih al Bukhari. It says that he learned Arabic. From the Arab. As you see. So all those statement is a statement of ignorance even if the one who say them are is a Christian it's okay I mean you get to, to be ignorant for some time you know me myself when I was a, a kid I heard people saying is uh, Muhammad from Ishmael from Ishmael so for for a while I was thinking okay he is from Ishmael how I know until you start you know digging and searching and studying and your knowledge increase and then you will find that this is was nothing but a false uh, uh, you know, statement. And you know, there is many people they go today in churches, they claim to be teachers, but they, they have no idea what they are talking about. Any Muslim? Arabic, Arabic does not exist in the time of Ishmael. Actually, uh, you know, I believe this is can be very accurate as I said the word uh, the language Arabic is not exist uh, as a language by itself um, it, it the Arabic language is a mix of Aramaic and other languages actually if you read the Quran I believe that the, the first Quran was not even in Arabic 
It was written in Aramaic, even Aramaic letters. Uh, and everything the Muslims today, they use in their Quran, obviously it's Aramaic. But they don't know what, what, what the word means. As an example, if you say to a Muslim, okay, you say Abraham, what Abraham mean? He don't know. What Moses mean? He don't know. You know? Okay, this is Hebrew, supposedly, but, you know, they have me in the Aramaic language, because Aramaic language is the mother language. You say Isaac, what Isaac mean? Israel, what Israel mean? They don't know. Sam, what Sam mean? Ham, all those names, what they mean? They don't know. What Adam mean? They don't know. For none of those have nothing to do with them. It is names and stories brought to them from other nations. You know what I mean? So, uh, because it is, let us say, imported culture, there is a gap when you read the Quran and you read the story of Muhammad. There is no connection. Muhammad himself do not know what he is talking about. As an example, if you, if you ask Muslims, let us go to the Quran. Uh, let us see this one. Chapter 19, verse number 1. You ask the Muslim, what is this? They say this is a miracle. <laughs> oh, what do you mean it's a miracle? What is this? Allah knows best. What do you mean Allah knows best? Do Muhammad know? No. Hmm. Do Aisha know? No. No, they didn't know. Why? Because Muhammad is a thief. He was copying from the book of Waraq ibn Nufal. And in the beginning, Waraq ibn Nufal, he wrote Kahyas. What Kahyas mean? He have no idea. Have you ever heard of somebody as a teacher? He says to you, today I will teach you something. And then he writes in the screen, chaos. And then you ask him, the teacher, what does that mean? He says, Allah knows best. Why? Because he is a thief. He doesn't know. This is not his book. You know what I mean? This is style of write of writing or writing is Aramaic style, Christian Aramaic. They summarize from the beginning what the topic will be about it's like the title so letters have have a value in the aramaic language and actually even the arabic because they are copying the aramaic so each letter have an aramaic uh, uh, value and you will not you will notice if you put all the value together they will make a title says kahias which mean uh, Christ is my God. And does it, does it make sense? Yeah, so absolutely. This is a chapter of Maryam. Chapter of Maryam. Who is Maryam? The mother of Jesus. So what the first sentence is saying? Christ is my God. al Masihu Ilahi. Muhammad, you do not know what this means. He copied the letters as they are, put them there, you know, but no. But this is about Mary. The whole chapter supposedly is about Mary. And as usual, Muhammad always copied the name wrongly. So he thought that Maryam is the same Maryam as the sister of Aaron. This is why in the Quran he called her, O sister of Aaron. Idiot. You know, Muhammad always remind me of a thief, uh, he stole a rose rice, you know, and then he don't want anyone to know that this is the stolen uh, rose rice. But in the, in the whole city, there's only one rose rice. So what Muhammad will do? In order, nobody will know that this is a rose rice. He changed uh, the thing in the front of the car, you know, he put something in the top of it. He took it, but let's say he take the, the symbolic for uh, Honda. He put it there. People ask him, what does this mean? He don't know. 
because both are a theft. All right. Do we have any Muslim have a comment? Anyone? Where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. Will you, why you call him? This is an example of his stupidity. Yes, sir. I know that this is not Yasser Kadri, the real one, but I don't know. If we ask Yasser, why you call him Jesus? I mean, look how funny. Look how funny Islamic cult is. Where Jesus said, I am God, worship me. All right. I'm not going to show you. Where he said that for now, but you just you just confirm to us that he is the savior, so he's God. Do you know what Jesus mean? What Jesus mean? If we ask this Abdul, the one who is saying, "Where Jesus said I am God worship," do you know what, even what Jesus mean? You sure? You don't know. It take you two seconds to go and search, and you will find that you are an idiot by asking the question, because the name give you the answer. Isn't it amazing how? How funny they are. And that's why I say always, stupidity is amazing. You just, you know, you call him the savior and you say, where he said I am God? Who can save us, save God? You know what I mean? Who is the Savior or save God? There's nobody can save you, save God. So you say, where is the Savior? Say it, I am God. It's like saying, where the, 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 the one in the, what they call him? The swimming, uh, the beach guard? You know, where the beast God, he said, I know how to swim. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I don't know what they eat, but whatever they're eating, it's, it's impacting them badly. Right? Like, where the, 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 the swimming pool guard, he said, I can swim. He's swimming guard, he's swimming pool guard. Like what? Where he said, I know how to swim. No. Do we have any uh, smart Muslim? Do you have anything to say? And you know, those people, they get offended. If you say smart Muslim, they get offended. If you say stupid, they get offended. doesn't matter what you say, they get offended. He saved you from the jail. That's, that's wonderful. That the jail is the most dangerous creature. He is the devil. That's alone, that's mean he's God. Even your prophet says, when the Dajjal he see him, he will be melt like salt in water. Why, how come the Dajjal did not melt when he see Muhammad, Shaitan? Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Uh, Isa, you see, I cannot really confirm, but I am thinking, this is my own theory, that Isa was the son of Maryam. Maryam. Which Maryam we are talking about? Not Maryam, the mother of Jesus. Maryam, the 
Maryam, the sister of Aaron, which the Quran confirmed that Muhammad he, Muhammad think that Mary she is really the sister of Aaron in chapter 19, verse number 28. You see here, the Muslim uh, Muhammad he got busted in his time. A rabbi, uh, a Jewish rabbi, he came to Aisha and he told her, but there's a huge difference, there's hundreds of years between them. How Mary, she is the sister of Aaron. She told him you are a liar, which means Aisha, she believed that this is what Muhammad meant. But when the news came to Muhammad, Muhammad got busted. So he need to find a solution. So he said, at that time, they used to call them by the great ancestor, the great one. Okay, why the great one? Why Aaron, not Moses? Secondly, Mary, she is not from the tribe of Aaron, which means she is not a tribe from Moses. Number three, well, if you want to call them by their ancestor, you call him the daughter of etc., not the sister. Hmm? The daughter. To say the sister, you are making her equal to her grandfather, and this is not right. Right? Uh, so Muhammad, because he is a, a thief, he's a fool, he learned from the Jews that there is a, a woman, her name is Maryam, she is a sister of Mor Moses and Aaron, and she have a son, maybe, his, his name is Isa. So he thought that Isa is a son of Maryam, the sister of Aaron. So according to Muhammad, Jesus is the nephew of Aaron. Now, Muslims, they try to get away from it, but I don't know if you guys remember how we can prove that this is not something they can escape. Anyone knows how, how, how they can escape? Who can help me? I, I think I, it's time to ban some kids here, like this guy Yasser Kadri. Go change your name. I don't have time for kids, my friend. Anyone knows how we can get them busted? Not only you say, like, okay, what if a Muslim says to you, what Muhammad said? Oh, they used to call them by their great uh, uh, ancestors. How we can get them busted? That this is not a city. This is not what happened. Look what happened. Mary, Mary in the Quran, she is the daughter of who? Anyone remember? Even there's a chapter in the Quran. It's called the chapter of Imran. Al Imran. <laughs> Al in Arabic means family. Okay, family of Imran. Okay. So how how Imran became the father of Mary? So Muhammad not only stupid, he is a donkey. He said that Mary she is the sister of Aaron, and he made her father the father of Moses, because the father of Moses is Amram. <laughs> you see what happened? So now how they can get away from this? Muhammad he got busted from every direction. Muslim they tried to save him, but not with me. You cannot save him with me. How Imran, uh, even, even the name, he cannot even call it correctly. It is Imran, not Imran. But Imran, Imran, you know, the last letter, instead of saying N, he said uh, uh, M, he said N. But how Mary father became, became the father of Moses? You know what I mean? Imran has no sons. Imran has only a daughter. Uh, Christopher, I don't know. You are, you are thinking in different direction. Her friend. Mary, her father, is not Imran. Where the Imran is coming from? Are you a fool? Mary, she is not a daughter of a guy. His name is Imran. The only Imran we knew is the father of Moses and Aaron. And this is why the Quran says, Mary, the sister of Aaron. Did you get it? So according to the stupid Quran, Mary, she is the daughter of Imran. But Imran is the father of Moses. And that explains why in chapter 19, verse number 28, 
it says that she is the sister of Aaron. Are you getting it? Or is still trying to swallow? Are you getting it? No? <laughs> Behold, the women of Amran said, Oh my Lord, I dictate into you what is in my womb. Okay, who is that one? Her name is Maryam. Chapter 3, verse number 36. Do you see it? But Amran is not the father of Mary. This is the father of Aaron and Moses and Maryam. Are you getting it? <laughs> I don't know how slow people are, but you can be slow as much as you want. Maybe you need oil change. Right? <clears throat> Any Abdul have a comment? So isn't it really obvious that Muhammad is a fraud? Actually, this statement alone is enough to prove that Muhammad is a fraud. Why, the, why we Christians 600 years before Muhammad, we need to change the name of the father of Mary? I mean, what does this have to do with anything? Even the name of, the, of Mary changed. And here it's, it's so clear that Muhammad, when he said that Mary, she is the sister of Aaron, it was what it's meant. Because the name of the father of, Umra, of Aaron and Moses and Maryam is Umram. It's clear like the sun as a clear, but if you are a person who don't want to, uh, I mean, if, if, if the truth hurting you, okay, take some drugs maybe, you know, just lie to yourself, says, no, I can't believe it. Any Muslim have anything to say? Armani? You better go, Armani. Take care. Take a hike. Did you read the Bible from the beginning to the finish? No, Armani, I was waiting for you to teach me because I am illiterate like your prophet. Did you ask the same question to your prophet? Hmm? I mean, how your prophet, he confirmed the book which the Christian have, but he don't speak their language, he don't speak their book language, he don't know how to read even his own language. How you confirm the book? You know what I mean? I mean, the funny, the Muslim, they ask you, are you knowledgeable? Do you know how to read? Even they make fun of my English. Their prophet did not even know to, to, to read his name. Christian prince, he do not know how to read Quran. <laughs> and they make videos, suppose the Christian prince do not know how to read. I mean, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Let us say for the sake of argument, which everybody knows why you are making, trying to make fun, you are bankrupt. I mean, I am an Arab, born in the Middle East, all my life screen in Arabic, and now I do not know how to read Arabic, no problem. Who, who's going to believe you anyway? But let us say for the sake of argument, I am from Iran, I don't speak Arabic. Okay. And all of you Muslims do not know Arabic. So this is the this this is the, the the bankruptcy of Islam. If you do not know Arabic, they make fun of you. Like Mimi Hijab, he said to David Wood, "I know this is coming. <laughs> you do not know Arabic, or you do not know Hebrew." <laughs> and later we find out that this idiot, he's a donkey. He said Elijah, I mean God would ask, he teach, teaching David Wood or Hebrew now. And he said that uh, it, uh, Allah, he said, pray for, not to. And when he asked him, oh, Allah have uh, hands and legs, he said, who said so? Your prophet says so, you idiot. <laughs> the Quran says so. Do we have any Muhammadan? Always, always, you know, when, when you see Muslims, they are launching an attack on a person. That means he is doing a great job, all right? And they try to put the pressure on him, like depend on the person. 
Like as an example, there is a person, his name Apostate Prophet. You know him, right? He have his own channel. He is an ex-Muslim from Turkey. So uh, this guy is a very nice guy. And he cannot, I mean, you know, some people, they cannot take stress. So they try to put stress on him. They try to insult him as a person. This is their strategy. So you need to be strong when you deal with this garbage. You are dealing with the garbage literally. So they try to humiliate you, to make stories about you, they lie about you. Just laugh. Never make them feel happy for what they do. You can call me, you can make stories about me, who cares? <laughs> once uh, uh, once uh, in a chat room, uh, somebody says to me, Christian Prince, uh, Muslims, they say that you love women. I, I, I took the microphone. I said, my friend, thank God I don't love men. I love women. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Supposedly, they are trying to just like, you love women? Really? What? What does that mean? Yeah. They try to make you like, I mean, imagine who is talking about loving women. They have a prophet who was jumping from a woman to a woman like a monkey. I am, you know, I don't have 13 wives. I don't have a girlfriend. I don't have anything. Do you like women? I, sure, sure, women are beautiful. Why not? God, he made me a man. <laughs> so if you are making me like feel bad, like is that women? No, I will laugh at you. So they try to make you like the devil. You know, he love women. I was so, oh, who, what? Yes, thank God. I don't, I am not going to do the same as Muhammad, who was licking the face of Osama. You know, remember the say of Osama? He licked his face and he said, I wish if Osama, or if Osama was a girl, I would dress him until he grew up and get married. Why you are wishing Osama to be a girl? Licking his face. Right? So they, they tried always. Anyone who speak against them, they try to put you down. And look what happened now with Yasser Qadri. You know, Yasser Qadri was their sheikh, was their scholar. They love him, Allahu Akbar. He, he teach them even terrorism, you know. Um, I got him busted many times. Yasser Qadri, suddenly he said something they don't like. The Quran is a shish kebab. Or Qadi, Yasser Qadi, huh? Suddenly, they are waging war in Yasser Qadi. Suddenly, this guy is not a Muslim. I will not be surprised, by the way, if they say that he is sent by the Jews. You know? I'm telling you, I will not be surprised if they do so. Yesterday, he was their scholar. Today, so they do video editing not only for me, they do editing for their own scholars. They call them scholars yesterday. Yesterday he was a scholar, today is the enemy of Allah. And now this guy is going over from place to place like a monkey, flagging the videos about him. Specifically Christian videos. Can you imagine that you invite somebody to do an interview with him. And then you edit the same as he did with my, you know, he told the Muslims, you want to debate me, this Mimi Hijab is a coward. You don't dare to debate me. You will never dare. So what he do? We call, Christian Prince, listen to this. Did you say this? Uh, and they play short, like 10 seconds. I'm saying to a Muslim woman, suckle me. Did you say that? Did you say that? Yeah, yeah, I said that. I was quoting your stupid prophet. He hung up on me. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> only ban people who act like child not because yeah you know we, we ban people there's people they are coming here just to be annoying I don't ban you for you you know I say always actually I say only Muslims can call me many Christians they wish they want to talk to me I give opportunity to Muslims so I'm not banning Muslims that's not true but if somebody coming like a, you know, a kid, like a monkey, keep repeating spamming, we will block you, even if you are a Christian, who cares? Either you are an adult, speak like an adult, or, you know, go watch cartoon with Aisha. 
So do we have any Muslim want to say anything to us to prove to us Islam from heaven, from God? And then now what we see that Islam is really funny, stupid. I mean, what kind of a prophet he think that Mary, she is the sister of Aaron and she is the daughter of Amran, as you see. How in the world Mary, she became the daughter of Amran? What happened? Do you think Mary, she went to the social security department and she changed her name? I'm just wondering, maybe. Hmm? Can you Muslim have an idea? Anyone? How Mary she became the daughter of Amron? I want to know. Who want to help me? How Amron, the father of Moses, became the father of Mary? By the way, they used to live in the same time, huh? Uh, just there is like uh, hundreds of years between them, not much. It's possible, it's possible. Hmm? Magic, uh, magic can happen. You know, magic, yeah. Actually, don't you know that Muhammad, he was controlled by magic? They got some hair. This is why, you know, like, uh, I understand why brother Sam Shamun, he, he shaved his head. I think he is afraid somebody would control him by his hair. <laughs> yeah, they got his hair, brother. Very evil people. Never give your hair to somebody. <clears throat> Do we have any Abdul? Want to say anything? There's a guy, you know, he's a, supposedly a Jewish, but he's a uh, poor guy. I feel sorry for him. You see, the Christian prince, he called Muslims Abdul. Guys, do you remember? my debate with Sheikh Abdul Wadud. His name is Abdul Wadud, Abdul, you know. So he says he tried to insult them by calling Abdul. Abdul, my friend Abdul is what they call themselves. Sheikh Abdul Wadud, he gave me an example. If you remember the debate, he says, I will give an example. There's a guy, his name is Abdullah, and the other one, his name is Abdul. You remember? Go watch the debate. Silly people, and try, because he got them busted. They have no knowledge. For me, by the way, when Muslims or even anyone, he, uh, they attack me, I believe it's for, for the benefit of what we do. The more people they speak against us, the more people watch my videos. And this is exactly what I want. You know what I mean? Like you will see a funny guy without saying his name. Don't make the, 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 the fool famous. He says, Christian, you know, guys, don't watch Christian Prince videos. Each time I go to his channel, I see people watching his videos. You eat it. So why you are going there if you don't watch them to watch that? I mean, look at this idiot. He is trained the Mohammedan. Don't watch Christian Prince channel. He says every time he go live on air, I go to his channel and I see you there. Don't go there. But so why you go there yourself? And, and those who do not know who's a Christian prince, they will wonder, like, who is this guy, Christian prince? Let's see his video. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's why I say stupidity is amazing. Big mistake. <laughs> Big mistake. Hmm. Uh, you know, when, uh, when Mimi, he did that video, the Muslim, they say, Christian Prince, he finished you. You are finished. And, uh, you know, you see, even if I am not telling people in advance, I have 900 people watching. And do you see how much I finished? Finished for what? For saying, suck on me? Go to your property. And the funny, they say, Christian Prince, pre the sexual predator. For what? First of all, it, you know, you, you liars. The women, she was saying dirty words about Jesus. And that's why I quoted for her what her prophet said about Sakani. Secondly, if somebody says to a Muslim woman, Sakal me, that will make him a sexual predator, you just admitted that your prophet is a sexual predator. <laughs> you don't know what they are doing. Uh, anyway, do we have any Muhammad and have anything to say? Who is a Muhammadan? He can tell us something good about Islam.
forget about everything. Yeah, he will be refuted, you know. Uh, yes, yeah, Kadri, he will be refuted. I saw a video actually of a Muslim he is refuting Yasser Kadri by speaking about letters. He says, as an example, in some verses, the letter it says this and letter says that. It's just a different letter. This is not what the Quran is about, my friend. What letter? What letter? One dot can change the whole meaning of the word. Secondly, when you say it's preserved, it is preserved, right? And then we find that, as an example, one chapter, which is Al-Ahzab, used to be equal to the chapter of Al-Baqarah. How many verses in Al-Ahzab? Let us see. This is the chapter of Al-Ahzab, as an example, not, not, not just, you know, how many verses are there? Let us check together. 73. How many? Total of 73. This chapter used to be equal to the chapter of the cow. How many verses in the cow chapter? Read carefully. 286. So, how many verses are missing in one chapter? And this is according to Muslims' reference, not to us. According to Muslim reference, according to Aisha, according to the scholars, from 286, we have 73 only. What happened? The goat ate it, maybe, as the hadith says. There's 213 verses missing in one chapter. According to Muslims. So what one letter and two letters and five letters, what are you talking about? Right? What letter? And by the way, I'm very upset that they are missing because that will make us. We have in one chapter one two hundred thirteen jokes is missing. For me, I'm against any goat when I eat the Quran, as the Hadith says, because. The more the goat eat, the less we can expose Muhammad. So don't take me wrong. I am I support the preservation of the Quran. You know what I mean? And I'm so upset actually from this goat who ate the Quran, if you remember. If I know that this goat will do that, I will shoot the goat if I was there. I will never let her even get close to the bed of Muhammad. Because the more the more we lose of the Quran, the more we, uh, you know, have less good time. Any Muslim have anything to say? By the way, as long as the Quran says, anything happened is by the will of Allah. So do you think this goat was sent by Allah? Anyone have like an explanation from the Muslim belief? Why this goat? Who is the one who behind? Anything happened in this earth is by the will of Allah. If Allah don't want something to happen, it will never happen. So, if this goat did, did eat the Quran, obviously the one who sent the goat is Allah. This is Allah goat, which make it a holy goat.
because now it's sent by Allah and now she eat the word of Allah. Any Muslim? No, no, like, you know, uh, uh, you see the, the, the Quran confirm that nothing happened. You remember the guy who called me in the other day from, from he's from Bangladesh, but he lives in England? Salsuri, I don't know what his name, Salmuno, Salulala, Salaluri, I don't know. The guy who speaks like Sabil Ahmad, you know, so fast. So I said to him, today I open my computer and I start exposing Muhammad. Is that something I did willingly or Allah forced me? Do you remember? He refused to answer. Remember, right? I keep repeating the question once after once after once. He will never answer. Why? Because the answer is so clear. Allah, he made me open the computer and speak against Allah. What kind of religion is religion now? So when the goat, she ate the Quran, obviously Allah, he sent the goat. Because the goat cannot do anything. Hey, no, no one, according to, to Islam, no one can do anything unless it is the will of Allah. Even your adultery, if you have adultery, it is from Allah. Allah, he wrote for you the adultery you will do. You see, Islam can be, uh, I mean, it can be like, uh, you can make it look nice by adding some uh, spices here and there, and making some lies. Muhammad was a decent man. He was the best of his people. He was from honorable family. I mean, honorable family, they are full of lies. Honorable family, the guy he used to take a shower with dead dogs and women blood from period. I mean, how honorable can be? You know, when, when, when you speak to Muslims about Muhammad, they try to make him God. He is from a biggest family. He is from honorable family. So if he was from honorable family, how come when Khadija, she made her father drunk? Just to make him think that he agreed to marry her to him. I mean, she needed to commit a fraud with Muhammad by the help of Muhammad in order to make her able to have Muhammad in her bedroom. Why the father was rejecting Muhammad? Remember, Khadija, she was married to two men before Muhammad. She had many kids before Muhammad. She is way older than Muhammad. So actually, the father should be happy that a younger man is going to marry this woman, especially, you know, we Middle Eastern, uh, all Middle Eastern, they want to have a virgin. Are you a virgin? If you're not a virgin, bye-bye. Okay? Yeah. So how come Muhammad want to marry this woman who is not a virgin and have many kids? Because she have money. And Muhammad is not from an honorable family. Otherwise, the father will be dying to make her have such a husband. As the Muslim claim, he is the most decent man. Trustworthy. He was a noble man, but you know, at that time, noble men, they used to take shower with dead dogs. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a tradition maybe at that time. My grand, 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 grandfather, who's an Arab man, he told us that at that time, we don't take shower in the bathtub. We used to jump with dead dogs and women in blood from period and garbage, because that will protect us from mosquitoes. Hmm. I mean, do you see how noble he is? They say to you, he's a noble man. This man is not only not a noble, obviously he is a mentally ill. I mean, regardless who you are, how in the world I'm going to jump with dead dogs and women blood from period and garbage, and even they say it's a stink. 
in Arabic, by the way, you see here, uh, 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 you know, the translation is not too much accurate, but it says in Arabic, a netin, a stinky. I mean, it's stinky. It's very noble. Like, you know, when I say I'm an Arab, I think people here, they imagine Christian friends taking a shower with some dead dogs, women of blood from, when I'm going to get women blood from beer, you know, I'm poor guy, single. I don't have 13 wives like Muhammad. So, I mean, what, what kind of a, what kind of a, a jacuzzi is jacuzzi is? Just imagine the jacuzzi of Muhammad, you will know how noble he was. And the funny, when they ask him, you will see here that the Arab are not like this. You see, yes, they are wild people. They stay in the desert, but they are not dirty. I mean, you see, if you are a Bedouin, there's no water. Water is very little to drink, etc. So it's a priceless thing. So you will not be able to take shower, clean yourself as normal people who live in towns or villages, etc. But this guy, even the Arab don't do what he do. Look. They're asking him, are you doing this? Who's asking him? The Arab themselves. Are you doing this? Can we use this? Because they saw him doing it. He says, yeah, sure. You know, the water is always pure. Science. Look at this hadith here. I passed by the Prophet. And look how they put, they put those things. B U H. A P U H B P B U H. What is that? Corporation something? I mean, they cannot even say his name without adding those things. He will get killed. For he's the, he's the real God of us now. So I pass by the prophet P B U H F O O O O M A. All the alphabet. Peace upon him. Allah pray for him, not to him. When he was performing wudu, uh, performing wudu. What does that mean? He's getting ready to be, to be pure. He is ready to be pure. Wudu is ablution. To be pure for prayer. Okay, how Muhammad do ablution? Look at this. By from the will of Bida, I said, are you performing wudu from it when garbage is thrown in it? <laughs> Unbelievable. Like what? And the guy is a Muslim, by the way. The guy who asked him the question, Abu Sa'id al Khudari, his father, Abu Sa'id al Khudari is a very well known person. His father said to Muhammad, the story reported by a very, very well known Muslim person. So his father, he was asking Muhammad, Are you doing a pollution with this garbage? <laughs> hey, my friend from India, welcome. All right. Look at this hadith here. The people ask the Prophet, S A W S. Look, here is S A W S. Here it is P B U H. I mean, do you see the difference, brother? It's fun to be Muhammad. Look, here, Prophet Muhammad, P B U H. Here, Messenger of Allah, S A W S. I mean, that's, that's, you cannot say the name of Muhammad without all those letters after him. Mercedes Benz, 300, 500. I mean, you have to say something. Come on, this is Muhammad. You can't say just Muhammad. Allah himself pray on him. Huh? Called Fairuz. Fairuz, he left Islam, my friend, didn't, don't you know? He left Islam already. He called us and he denounced us now. And he accepted Christianity. He became a Christian now. Can we perform evolution out of the will of Buddha, which into it, menstrual clothes and dead dogs and stinking things were thrown? And do you know how big this thing is? It's smaller than jacuzzi. The water, they are, this is, by the way, they call it, or most of them say, this, there's Abdul, his name is uh, Osama Abdullah. Osama Abdullah, he gathered with a team to refute me. And they said the Prophet was so clean and even he used to clean himself from lice. Can you believe it? I mean, those guys, five or seven guys, they gathered together to refute Christian Prince. And now they want to prove that the Prophet was clean. How they prove it? They say, 
the prophet he was clean and even he used to clean himself from lies isn't it amazing I mean why you don't believe that the prophet was so clean he used to clean himself from lies if I play for you the recording of this guy you will die laughing <laughs> let us see Oh, yeah, I don't know where to find this. It's funny. I mean, five of them, he, he says, I want to say thank the brothers who helped me to refute Christian Prince. And he starts saying, the prophet, he was so clean and even he cleaned himself from lice. <clears throat> Let us see if I can find it. Yeah, sometime if you look for something, you can't find it. The funny the, the this guy first time he come to my chat room yeah here we go i found it uh -huh, i found it hold on we will hear we found an it audio brother. <laughs> we found it <clears throat> You want to hear it? Uh, whether the two million people who currently live in Mecca well, uh, provided that with ample scientific quotes. Uh, point number three, the Islamic standards. I've demonstrated the Islamic standards on cleanliness of water. Uh, if the smell, taste, and color of the water aren't, uh, are not altered, I mean, the hadith says it's a stink, and they says the water is not altered, <laughs> and the color. The water remains pure. I have uh, also proven that the water that the Prophet of Islam drank fit uh, those standards. Uh, point number four, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was clean and even cleaned the lice from himself. <laughs> Unbelievable. Did you hear it? The prophet was so clean and even he cleaned his lies from himself. Hello? What's wrong with you people? Crazy people, aren't you? He was so clean. Fit uh, those standards. Uh, point number four. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was clean and even cleaned the lies from himself. Uh, point number five. My friend, there's no screen because this guy, there's no video. It's just uh, text, you know, nothing there. Yeah, I know there's no screen. Don't worry about it. But anyway, this guy, he gathered like a bunch of uh, uh, supposedly apologetic, if they can call them, like Mimi Hijab. They are a bunch of kids, you know, and they want to refute me. Which consists of the following seven points. Uh, the fees uh -huh. that Christian Prince raised against Islam during my debate with him. The funny, they debate me. In the debate, they get spanked. What is your answers during the debate? Why now? You see, they start making videos about the debate because the debate was horrible. So now he is trying to de to refute me, and he gets five of his friends, or four, and I'm, I'm not sure I don't remember how many. They are very well known by name, supposedly. And the brother, today we are going to refute the lies of a Christian prince, which consists of the following seven points. Seven points, uh, brother. The first point. 
Was the body of the water really a well or was it a stream of water? Point mm. number two. Ample, uh, provided ample scientific quotes from the United States government's department. From the United States government department. The United States government department says if water have dead dogs in it and women have blood from period <laughs> and garbage you can drink from it. <laughs> and he quote for you, if a water coming from under the ground, that will filter. You eat it. What water from the ground? This is water of the sewage. This is this is not a living well. It's a dead well. There's no water in it. The water there is it's not like water coming from the ground. It's a water coming from the sewage. It's a low point where the water of the houses come to that point. This is why they are throwing garbage in it. You are living in the desert. If a desert in the desert, nobody throw garbage in a water unless this water is garbage water anyway. It's a sewage. Idiot of energy and wikipedia.org wikipedia uh, website which is a scientific website proving wikipedia.org is a scientific website okay that soil filters water from see soil filter water but the dogs is coming from the top or from the water from <laughs> the water have dead dogs the, the dogs they came from the <laughs> The dogs are around Muhammad, they are dead. And he says the soil filtered the water. <laughs> Bacteria and microbes. <laughs> I provided that with ample scientific quotes. Oh boy. Uh, point number three, the Islamic standards. I've demonstrated the Islamic standards on cleanliness of water. Mm. Uh, if the smell, taste, and color of the water uh, aren't are not altered, then the water remains pure. The ones is asking for a screen. My friend, there's no screen. This guy is not, there's no video. There's, he's, not, he's just talking, so there's no screen. I will put for you something in the screen. Here we go. Are you happy now? Here we go. That's better. <laughs> there's no screen. Pure. I have uh, also proven that the water that the Prophet of Islam drank fit uh, those standards. Uh -huh. uh, point number four, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, was clean and even cleaned the lice from himself. Okay, okay. You, you people like to have a screen, huh? You like to see pictures. Mm. All right. So Prophet Muhammad, he was so clean to the point he cleaned the lice from himself. And by the way, do you know why he mentioned the lice? Because in the, the, in, when he was talking to me, he said, the Christian prince, you Christians are, are, you know, you are not clean. You don't clean yourself. I bet you, you have a lot of flies in your head. <laughs> I said, okay. So if somebody have lies, is dirty? He said, sure, yeah, it's dirty. What do you think? He said, are you sure? He said, yeah, for sure. <laughs> he said, are you sure? You know, the guy got so excited. He said, yeah, hello. And then I showed him as a prophet full of lies. You should see what happened. And now, because he got busted, he's trying to cover it. So the prophet was so clean, and he even cleaned himself from lice. <laughs> like the Muslim women, she said to me, the Christian women, they are, they are full of AIDS. <laughs> And the Muslims, they cut my video and they went there. I was saying the fact it spread more there. <laughs> oh, crazy people. So the Prophet was so clean to the point he cleaned himself from lice. Actually, do you know that Muhammad, he says lice are blessed animals? For they wake up the Prophets to pray? Do you know that? Yeah. Uh, Muhammad even forbid them from cursing the lice. Even Muhammad, he says that Allah tests him by lies. Prophets are tested by lies. And this is why I am not a prophet yet. How, where, where I'm going to get the lies from? No? Actually, there is a, there's an article. Let me find it. Hold on. Uh, people in uh, Dubai, they were selling a lies because the prophet he used to have a lot of lies in his head. Um, 
So because he used to have, yeah, here we go. That's it, they want to follow the Prophet. Here we go. And they are saying that it is scientifically correct to do so. Lies are being sold in Dubai. Lies are sold in Dubai for the people who have spent so much money for looting lies. FSOs, because lies is being sold in Dubai. Uh, what is this? I mean, this is English. I don't understand. Not even a normal price, only lucky 14 dirham. I know this translation is weird. Let me find something. This is Daily Bangladesh newspaper. Let me find something else. Yeah, just because the prophet, he have a lot of lies in his head, so I already start getting lies. Yeah. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, brother. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, this religion make you lose your mind. Seriously. This religion make you really, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Right? But if I show you the, if I show you the, the Arabic newspaper they are saying because the Prophet used to have a lot of lies in his head so obviously it's healthy it's good otherwise Allah will not allow it you know those are sent by Allah why he have lies they are healthy and they say the Prophet hair was very good so women who they are suffering from bad hair they are advising them to get lies in their head they will fertilize you brother <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. <clears throat> if you don't have lice in your head, you don't know what you are missing. Do you see? Look at this article. Lice is used in Dubai to treat your hair if you are losing your hair. Yeah. Are lice being used to treat hair loose in Dubai? Yeah, brother. <laughs> madness is amazing oh boy do you think guys i should open a lice store it's like it looks like it's going to work <clears throat> hey steve how are you how is jamaica doing i went to jamaica actually i like it very beautiful country and a lot of roosters everywhere but there's no lice <laughs> that's why i could not stay for long yeah there's no lice i'm not going to stay in jamaica without lice hello no even them it is like you go to the hotel they ask him they ask you like sir do you like the hotel room with lice or without lice like the prophet or like you know are you sunni or shia you no know? if you are sunni you have to follow the steps of the prophet you have to get lice you know Actually, if I go in election in the Middle East, but you know, we don't believe in democracy anyway, we will force people to vote for me anyway. Um, I will say in the speech, I will guarantee a lies for every citizen. Alhamdulillah, lies for every citizen. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Yeah. The Prophet was clean, and even he was cleaning himself from lies. Hmm. That's something. Super intelligent people. Uh, point number five. I've exposed Christian Prince's lies on the water of Zemzem, for it is only a small stream of water and not a large one. As See how small they are? I expose their lies. They say that this is a miracle, have a lot of water, and I made them say with their mouth, that water of Zamzam is dead. Listen to what he will say. You see, in order to make a Muslim say something, ask him for the opposite. There's a there's a guy, I forgot his name. This is a friend of this guy, Satari, Vatari, something like this. Uh, I said to him, 
the prophet used to like you know he don't he don't he's not against gay he said no you know you are uh, you know wrong you are lying i said really I said, why are you showing me you know so if i give him the hadith which i the hadith in front of me in the screen if i give him the hadith to read he will say i reject it it is the aif. i don't accept it so look what he did i know he's going to pick up this hadith so he pick up exactly the hadith I want him to read. And he start reading until he arrived. That there is a, you know, and the prophet he ordered to kick the geese out of the houses. And the prophet he used to have a gay in his house. And Abu Bakr used to have a gay in his house. The whole, everybody have a gay in his house. I mean, and the second I said, see, look what, 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 the, what the gay was doing in the house of the prophet. The second he said that, he stopped talking and he left. So if I show him the hadith that the prophet he have again in his house, who stay all the time there, they will say, oh no, we don't accept it. I made him quote the hadith which I want. Because this is how it works. You are not debating them. For always they try to deceive and they try to lie. So you have, it's like, it's like a game, it's like a trap, you know? Christian Prince lied. Uh, the Saudi Arabian uh, government today provides water to its people, uh, uh, whether the two million people who currently live in Mecca and Medina, according, this number according to him, I don't know if this number is true or not, but anyway, it provides the water, the fresh drinkable water to them from uh, the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf. Basically, they have uh, special uh, processing plants that... So how your prophet order people to go and drink water Zamzam? And you Muslim, you send Zamzam to London, Zamzam to Australia. It's all it's fake. It's a fraud. There's no Zamzam. Zamzam is, is gone. They hook up uh, like pipes to it from the normal water. There's no Zamzam. No. And how Allah he order you to go and drink from Zamzam then? If there's no Zamzam no more. May, may, may Allah Zamzam you. Uh, take water from the sea and uh, filter uh, and, and clean out the salt. Process the water and turn it into clean and drinkable water mm. uh, this is where the Meccans of today get their water the stream of Zamzam is not big enough to take care of all of them right uh, point number six exposing Christian princes lies on the bewitchment of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him I've also demonstrated how Jesus suffered quote suffered Suff end quote and had evil desires that's according so the guys it's, uh, I quote he's quoting where we can find this is in the Bible I mean when they lie it's amazing the Bible says suffer and have evil desire and I quote this is quotation supposedly <laughs> I, I quote I quote again I quote <laughs> Oh boy, it is the best comedy. You know, uh, sometime I'm driving, I stop like in the traffic light and I go, I explode laughing. I, like I remember something happened during those debates. And you know, like it's embarrassing. Sometimes people will look like, what's wrong with this guy? But today, because of the Bluetooth, you know, you can save yourself from being like, it's, uh, uh, what, are you crazy laughing to yourself? Like, you know, they are, you are by yourself. But people, they would say, maybe he have a Bluetooth in the other ear, maybe, you know, he's listening to somebody, maybe. <laughs> it's the best comedy. Unbelievable. According to his New Testament, in him, during his 40 <laughs> days of temptation from Satan, uh -huh. the temptation was so bad and so heavy on Jesus that angels had to, quote, attend him <laughs> to help him from the, quote, suffering and, quote, evil desires caught evil desire caught and suffering caught <laughs> where, where we can and how the angels are attending him if he is not god he fasted for 40 days what temptation you coward you see when the bible says that the satan he is he tempt tempt is an act to try either it succeed or not but all of us we knew that but the story is there anyone can go read it satan he was not succeed so he failed in his temptation. Jesus never commits sin. Even the Quran and the Hadith confirm that. So those kids, because they are bankrupt, they didn't know what to do.
they are desperate. All of them, they are the same, same equality. They speak without knowledge. They don't have knowledge in their religion. This is why it be, it's very embarrassing. This idiot, even in, uh, when he was talking to me, I, I can't call it debate. I mean, I don't debate any of them. They are a bunch of kids, all of them. Uh, he said, uh, magic is proven to be false. Muslim, they start attacking him. What are you talking about? They made articles against him. This guy, he'd been tortured by Muslims. He said, uh, you know, magic is proving to be false. I said, okay, wonderful. Let us show you the Quran then. The second I showed him what the Quran says, he said, okay, Christian Prince, we will talk about this later. <laughs> I get to go. This <laughs> end quote that he had uh, from Satan. <laughs> um, you know, Jesus was losing his mind according uh, to the Bible. Yes, Jesus was losing his mind according to the Bible. <laughs> and, and he needed the angels to attend him uh, to end the suffering and the evil desires that he had from Satan for 40 days. So I've exposed Christian Prince on that and I've demonstrated that from the Bible's New Testament. This is true, yeah. And point, and point number seven, uh, Jesus and Paul did not care at all about body cleanliness. Uh-huh. And they even allowed their followers to eat dead and rotten animals. Demonstrated, demonstrated that thoroughly. All right. From the commentary right now, okay, just to prove that you are a liar again, once more. Okay, here we go. Let me. Uh... Anyway, it's a it's a kind of funny and. <laughs> <laughs> honestly it's the best comedy ever all of them they are the same and the only way to avoid to be humiliated is not to talk to me like you know Shabir Ali, Mimi Hijab all of them all of them they are willing to debate anyone but they will not talk to me all right <clears throat> Do we have any Muhammadan want to say anything? Anyone? We can change the topic if you want. If there is anything like you think it's good to talk about. Any Muslim think there's something good in the Quran? Or in Islam want to share it with us? See how nice I am? I'm not asking for something bad in Islam. I'm asking for something good. Any Muslim, he have an idea about something good in Islam? What is the meaning of Zamzam? I don't know really. I mean, this Zamzam thing is kind of weird. You know, the name is strange. I don't know. Doesn't even make sense. I don't think even it's an Arabic word too. <clears throat> any Muhammadan have anything to say see because we did not inform people that we are going live on air and this is not the time I go usually live on air so we don't have too many um, Can you talk about abrogated Medina versus Mecca versus? You know, I don't believe really in those Medina and uh, Mecca stories. <clears throat> However, as long as the Muslims believe in them, uh, the story is very simple. Muhammad, when he was in Medina, in Mecca, he was a weak person. He didn't have men and army. Uh, and when he went to Medina, you know, the situation changed. He became independent, he had men, then he had gang, you know, he invited a group, it's called Sa'alik. Sa'alik in Arabic is, is an insult. You know, when you say to somebody Sa'aluk, he will be so crazy if you say that to him. So Muhammad, he invited the Sa'alik, which is the outlaw, the criminals, the, the trash, of the Arab. You see, this is literally what the word means, Sa'arik, the trash. When when you commit a crime and you are an Arab, 
your uh, tribe will trash you. And look what the hadith says. Of course, Muslim they might say, where you get this from? That he have Sahariq. Let us see the reference. <clears throat> it says here, Muhammad he said, Abshiru ya Sahariq al Arab, ya Ma'ashar Sahariq al Muhajirin. Do you see it? Muhammad he called his followers Sahariq. The Muslim they translate it as the poor. The fact this is not true. First of all, those are not poor. They are criminals. They make a lot of money. So Ali simply are pirate. People who attack people in the street, uh, they rob them. You know, they take their money. They are making. They make a lot of money. Like you now, the 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 Sahari of uh, Somalia, the pirate. In one attack, they can make millions of dollars. They hijack a ship and they ask for ransom. They will not release the ship unless you give them two million dollars in one day. So they are not poor. This is very, you know, make you really rich fast. Right? People who uh, uh, commit crimes, especially heavy duty crimes, they will. They are not poor. They make a lot of money. How they will get poor? I mean, they get the money of the, everybody in their pocket in two seconds, right? So the Muslim, they they say here in the translation, rejoice you, the group of the poor immigrant. It doesn't say poor. It says Salik. <clears throat> Yeah, they are homeless, but not in the word of mean homeless, you know, they live, uh, they are the, the cast out members of their own tribes, which means they are a mix of people from different tribes, but all of them, they share one thing, their blood is for free, which means anyone can kill them, they are wanted. So, let us say I belong to a tribe, and I killed somebody, or I raped a woman, or did something. So, in order for my tribe to avoid the revenge of the other tribe, they wash their hands from my blood and that make me join the outlaw so I cannot live in the tribe no more I cannot be carrying their name I have no protection from them and then the other tribe they are free to find me and kill me you know the outcast exactly and this is what Muhammad in front of anyone who speaks Arabic it says Sa'alik Actually, let me find what Sa'arik mean in English. Maybe we can find because there is a the event that they have poetry is there, you know, they are. Here we go, we found them in Wikipedia. I'm not sure how accurate what they have there, but where most individuals have been forced of their tribes who lived on the fringes of society. <clears throat> And there is any proof that Muhammad tribes attacked the Jews, Christians, and Roman first? Well, Muhammad, he says that. I mean, you don't need to have a proof. Isn't it the Quran says, attack the Christians and the Jews? Chapter 9, verse 29. What uh, first? If you pay them, Jizya. Muhammad in the verse says, why he attacking them? This is Quran. <clears throat> he says, attack them because they don't believe in Allah. Not because they are attacking him. Do you see it? The Christians, actually, they are the ones who give refuge to Muhammad. Like the guy who was stabbing people today in uh, in Scotland, and the other one who a few days ago in, in, in London, shouting Allahu Akbar, you know, 
he was he came as refugee like Muhammad and later he stabbed you so when uh, when somebody says something you have to ask yourself where they get this from <clears throat> like saying that uh, Muhammad he uh, uh, you know uh, he attack only those who attack him the Christian never attack him Muhammad he went to Tabuk the first attempt to attack the Roman he failed he went with thousands of fighters he could not make it and then he you know he sent a letter first to the to the king of the Roman in uh, in Jerusalem convert or else as to Islam even the Muslims agree that he sent that it's in the Bukhari it's not you know the, the Roman never go there there's nowhere in history that the Roman went to Mecca so why Muhammad is how, how we will fight war, war with them so what happened when Muhammad he forbid non-Muslims from entering Mecca chapter 9 verse number 28 people they start complaining how we will make money now okay you took over Mecca you see that Tawbah is the last thing in Muhammad life this is a chapter should be actually at the end of the Quran not chapter number nine this is at the end of the life of Muhammad so uh, he forbid the, be the believers from allowing the non-believers to enter Mecca okay but the the Kaaba is a is a bazaar is a market is a mall like the mall today where people have stores lingerie Victoria's Secrets so uh, what the business will do now the Jews we kick them out we kill them the other Arabs we kill them to the rich one and the, the rich one they run away so what we will do now so he said to them in this verse if you see and if you fear poverty soon will Allah reach you okay how out of his bounty how go and attack the Christians and the Jews so attacking the Christians and the Jews was a solution for being in poverty there's no business so Muhammad he come with the idea the Christians are rich the Jews are rich let us attack the Roman let us attack the Jews and take their money you see it? it's just the verse after verse you see it if you fear poverty soon Allah will reach you go and kill the Jews and the Christians here we go why does it say because they are fighting you no fight those who believe not in Allah nor the last days so what is the problem you don't believe in Allah they don't believe in the last day of Muhammad, nor they forbid what forbidden by Allah, which means Islam teaching, and they don't approve his messenger. See the problem? Nor acknowledge the origin of truth, which is Islam. So this is the problem. But this is really an excuse for Muhammad just to make money. This is why he says, if they pay you, let them live. How come? What? So we we can bribe Allah? If we pay Allah, we still we can worship Jesus. You see here, it's a business. Is it clear? If you pay, you live. It's a gang. Muhammad, we just were talking about the outlaw, right? It's an outlaw gang, and he is the leader. That's why the Muslims themselves they accuse him of stealing underwear. Have you ever heard of a religion? the companions of the prophet accusing the prophet which is the best of them to steal clothing and the clothes itself is a theft too because they are fighting over what is stolen already you know <clears throat> i mean what kind of a prophet as you see in chapter 3 verse 161 How how a prophet can be a thief? And look at the false translation. It says, no prophet could ever be false in his trust. It doesn't say that. It says, Yahul. It's not for a prophet to be a thief. Change the translation. I mean, you cannot find even a decent translation. Let us see this one. What trust? Here we go. Look at this translation. Look how funny it is. Just to avoid that he's a thief. It is not for any prophet to take illegally a part of the booty. It's the booty, how it became legal. They attack a caravan and now they are fighting over the laundry. 
and they are fighting over what? Clothing. You believe it? I mean, look how trashy they are. They are not fighting over gold and silver. They are fighting over a piece of clothing. And the translation trying to avoid that it says Yahul, it's a, you, you, to steal. What illegally part, you know, why you don't say, okay, if somebody takes something illegally, isn't it a theft? Say it's a, they don't, they will not say that Allah is saying the prophet is not a thief. And actually this verse here proving that Muhammad is a fraud, anyone knows why? Anyone notice why? Let's see how many of you are listening, learning. How we knew that this verse proving Muhammad is a fraud. Okay, let's say this. Somebody accused me of a theft. And God wanted to show that I am innocent. Is it enough just to say, to make a verse made, delivered to me? I am I'm the one who delivered to you. So I am the one who's accused. And I am the one who will make a verse or deliver a verse saying I am not the one who took it. Doesn't make sense. Why Allah don't tell Muhammad who is the one who took it? We go to his house. We found the underwear. You know what I mean? Muhammad did not tell who is the one. Why Allah did not tell him who is the one who took the underwear? That will prove that Muhammad is innocent. And it's amazing. It's a miracle because nobody knows. You know what I mean? <laughs> are you getting my point so if you want to defend him and you are God at least tell us okay where we can find this underwear in the in the drawer of some who so it's going to be amazing if Allah told Muhammad go to the house of this guy and open his drawer and you will find the underwear and that will clear your name but to say it's not Muhammad you just prove that it's Muhammad because if it's not Muhammad it means someone else so how come Allah don't tell Muhammad who is he? So, you know, it's obvious, it's a stupid book. This book is a stupid, but sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I feel like, how in the world a human being can be so silly, stupid? Don't see it. I mean, it's, are you blind? Are we really blind? Is it clear? I mean, you accuse somebody, if he is a thief, he stole an underwear. And then you accept that he is not the one who stole it by making a statement saying, God told me to tell you it's not me. <laughs> you go to the bank you rob the bank and then the police come to you and they accuse you that you are the one who was in the camera and you say it's not me what the proof he said okay tomorrow Allah will prove it and then tomorrow you give him a verse says Allah gave me this verse it's not me who goes in the bank <laughs> who, who was it <laughs> Allah don't know so <clears throat> was it really an underwear you see i say it's underwear because it's obviously it's important you know we, we arab we, we care for the most part of the clothes like this is the underwear <laughs> oh boy hmm There's a there's an Arab guy, he uh, he's a womanizer. <clears throat> so what he do, he take a gift to women, and then he steal the gift after he sleep with them, you know. So he sleep with the women, he give her like a panty. She wear it, you know. She don't take it right away. He wanna give it. He keep the the the, the packaging. <laughs> he take the packaging with him. So. Uh, he always do the same trick and then one day he met the guy he said to him what is what what, what do you have with you he said oh this is a, a gift I have today I'm, I have a date I'm going to have a, a woman but she is married you know the guy he said oh really good for you man good for you let me see what you have what you have so he showed him what he had in the back. It was a panty his wife she was wearing last night. <laughs> and this is exactly what happened with Muhammad. Even when they accused his wife that she was sleeping with the guy, his name is Safwan. He made a verse saying she was not doing that. I mean, there is witnesses. 
there's people who they are witnesses the women she spent the night with him how he proved that his wife is not sleeping with the guy he made the verse Allah told him it's not her that's it the story is over yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. Anyway, did we have a good time today? Uh, now tomorrow, supposedly, I have a, a early morning program. Maybe I should move it to Sunday. What do you think, guys? Actually, today we are Saturday. You see, I'm not counting time. Man, oh man, I hate you all because of you. See, I'm imagining now it is Friday, <laughs> like Muhammad. Yeah, tomorrow is Sunday. I don't know. Okay. See, I don't like to go and speak about Muhammad in Sunday, actually. Maybe I should have changed the time to Monday. Leave Sunday holy. Uh, <clears throat> uh, let's see. How is your roof? Oh, my, my friend, come help me. <laughs> you know, my house is very old. You know, I, I appreciate the Lord, you know, having a roof is something wonderful. I'm so grateful. Um, but I have like bad insulation, you know, many things need to be repaired. And now it's getting more and more hot. And literally, I, I feel I'm being cooked like a barbecue. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and, you know, here labor in USA is very expensive, extremely expensive. It's okay, you know slowly slowly we make things work um no i think i will change the time from tomorrow i supposedly i will do it tomorrow but i think i will change the timing let us see i will change it to different time yeah i will make it monday the same time monday morning all right <laughs> maybe i go tomorrow in the quality of life i will see i did not go there for a long you know but i like to keep sunday away from the garbage of muhammad hey how are you bam from south america where from south america which country <clears throat> actually i order a fan for the attic uh, yeah very expensive stuff I ordered solar one, but they are expensive. But uh, better than being cooked, you know what you can do. Um, I am a person who like actually to do uh, work by my own hands. Um, I paint, I fix windows, I fix floor. I install faucets. I'm a multitask person. <clears throat> you look tired? You don't see me, my friend. No, I'm not really tired, but it's hot. It's hot and my house, the air condition is not working properly, very bad. So I have my fan and I cannot even force the fan on me, otherwise the sound will come in the microphone. So I'm sweating here to avoid the fan to be on me. <clears throat> uh, well, I'm not the one who can translate things. You know, there's a person actually, see many people, they ask me to translate and they text me in Skype. If you want to text me, text me in Patreon because in Skype, I have thousands of texts. I cannot read it all. Many of you, they text me there. They think I'm going to read it. I cannot. If you open my Skype, it's impossible. You know? Yeah. I am a bad handyman. Why, Samir? Why I'm a bad handyman? Do you like me to be like Muhammad? He was a handyman too. To the point he was uh, having uh, sexual intercourse with all his wives <laughs> without even washing or moving his hand. I mean, the guy without washing all the wives? Oh boy. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, Yeah, but those portable, they are expensive. And uh, actually, I put small one, but it's useless. You know, the, the temperature here goes really high, very high. 
so when it goes like in the middle of the day the temperature is like like an oven <clears throat> Anyway, God is good. Do you know proof, proof Hitchin? No, I don't know. I don't know this person. His name is Hitchin. From Tunisia, his name is Hitchin. The name is strange, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, don't worry about me. Everything is good. God is good. You know, always see the the <clears throat> what happen always when things let us say you you might think that things is going like bad on you uh, or there is something is really bothering you. I believe that everything is is for our good. For life, it's if we became so spoiled, we we became spoiled. Whatever the word means, you know what I mean. You will notice that people who have a lot of, uh, let us say, uh, things is easy in their life. They don't enjoy the taste of life. So I don't really mind. I mean, God is good. And God make you feel the value of having a roof over your house, over yourself. I mean, people, they, there's people sleep under the bridge. There's people, they have, we're talking about air condition. There's people, they never saw a fan in their life. So we always should be appreciating what we have. And life sometime bless us with some difficulty because difficulty make you really feel the good you have you know when a person is born uh, and everything is easy let us say you are born from a rich family villa swimming pool blah 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 you know okay but you don't know really you, you don't really enjoy what you have because you have it for granted a poor who bought for the first time a little tiny TV is way more happy than you living in that villa. For you will be more grateful, and this the, the, the let us say the secret of being happy is to be grateful. The second you start being ungrateful, you have no happiness. That's it. You are the piece of a bread in your table, you throw it on the floor. A person is a grateful. This is this is his love star. It's tasty. It's bread, beautiful. Thank God. But because you're a person who are who is not used to be grateful, you are. This is why you see most of people who commit suicide are very rich people, not the opposite. I mean, how in the world somebody is a famous actor or making millions, he commits suicide? How do you do that? Because their life became useless. They have everything. You know? Struggle is very healthy. Can make you stronger. It strengthens your mind. Because always you have to think how to make how to improve your life. And that will make you even work harder, especially if you have people who you love, you want to make them happier. You will see a poor guy, he go work hard to make little tiny salary, so he can buy little toy to his daughter. And when he grab it, it's like he got a treasure in his hand. It's like he just bought his dream. A spoiled kid in a rich family. You buy him every day at all. He is unhappy. He is complaining. He don't do good in school. He don't like people around him. He is lonely. He is. I mean, you will find all problems in the world is in the head of this child. Because he did not learn from his family to be appreciating what he had. Appreciation is the key of happiness. A person uh, who don't appreciate, he don't, he don't deserve what he had, and he will lose it. You know what I mean? Appreciating a, a, a man you have, a woman you have, a child you have. Uh, appreciating a uh, little roof you have in the top of your head you know appreciating that you are healthy even having teeth you know people don't appreciate their teeth until they lose them <laughs> that's the truth you know I mean we grow and we became old and etc and we have them for granted in our mouth right until we have pain and then you will notice that how important it is to have healthy teeth 
You know what I mean? Even that having teeth, like many, uh, there's people they are born blind. They don't even know when you say the mountains is so beautiful, the trees, the birds, the green, blue. They don't know what is that. So imagine yourself, you don't even have eyes. So if you if you look at what you have, you will notice how lucky you are, even if you think you have nothing. Because what is nothing for you, it might be a dream for someone else. There's some people they cannot walk. There's some people they cannot move their hands. There's people lost their, their sight. You know, things around you. I mean, life is full of stories. And if you are a person who will not learn how to appreciate, you will never live happy. Yeah. <clears throat> you almost lost your teeth last week. Ah, you did not do the laundry to your wife. <laughs> See what happened? You said last week. That's mean you are doing laundry every Sunday. I got it. So last week, I don't know how to read your name. It's in what? What is what? What language? Last week you did not do the laundry, and your mother-in-law, she, psh, you know, okay, you deserve it. <clears throat> yeah, his name is Qatham. Yeah, Qatham. Yeah. Um, all right do we have anything else yeah my advice for all always appreciate what you have otherwise you will lose it and mostly sadly people don't appreciate until they lose what they have it might be a man it might be a family member it might be a friend it might be even you know a part of your body uh, you know this is the this is the nature of a human being you know you might you might live with uh, like let us say uh, you have people you see every day and you think they are not important from your life or in your life you will not know really how important they are unless you stay away from them and if you do not even remember them that's mean obviously they are not important but if you really miss them so much that's mean you really really need them they are a very important part of your life and that's what happened with many of us like you know you have a child you humiliate him go find a job you know when i was in your age you know just don't be tough for your children give them a chance and be a be a hand for them not against them you know all of us we go through time when we are lazy maybe or we are not being successful or not even thinking right so don't make it worse the one who need you he need you now when he is not successful not when he is successful so you should be easier with the one who is not successful when he is not successful not the opposite usually we do the opposite and then we lose someone important for us uh, be smart, don't be a fool. All right? Uh, take care of your kids. Don't put too much pressure on them. Try to direct them without losing them. It's like, you know, sometimes, you know, when you put too much pressure, you have a screw. You think it's loose. And you want to tighten it so hard so it's going to be strong. But if you tie it too much, you might break it. So you have to know when is the limit when to stop and this goes for everything even for you sometimes you want to be tough on yourself you have a limit you have to know where and when to stop otherwise you will be broken all right um, anyway we have another channel we talk about those things it's called the quality of life. I did not go. Usually I go every Saturday and Sunday. But, you know, as you see, I'm really busy lately trying to make things happen. I have books need to be published. And God knows how many things I need to do at the same time. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's see.
Yeah, you see, if your father was a strict and you are not strict, that's not doesn't mean they are doing the right thing. You have to be strict. You see, you have to be strict about certain things. As an example, about ethic. Never compromise about ethic. Because the second you compromise about it, you lost him or you lost her. As an example, if you if you have a child, you let us say you have a son. He's ten years old. He went to the yard of the neighbors. He stole some lemon or some orange. He brought them home. And the father or the mother, they say, "Oh, good for you! Bring more." You just created a thief. You just what created a thief, literally. You just taught him a bad ethic, that taking what is not belong to you is a good thing. So you have to be strict when it's come to ethic, and you have to be easy when it's come to skills and quality. As an example, your son is not doing good in school. Don't break him. Maybe he is not good in school. He will be good in something else. He's not being bad, you know. Not being good in school doesn't mean he's a bad person. You understand? So, never compromise about ethic with your children, especially in early age. Otherwise, you will break them. You are going to com you will compromise your children. You are making them a fraud. Never speak bad language in front of your children with your wife, even though you do maybe, which is wrong. If you say the F word in front of your children, what do you think your child will be? If you insult the mother, why they will respect you? Why your child will respect you if you insult their mother? Or the mother she insult the father? You just gave them an example of an insult family. So you have to be careful, never compromise in ethic, and start with yourself because you will be the best example. Somebody call, you tell your son, tell him I'm not here. You just told him to be a liar. You know what I mean? You just told him to be a liar. He look at you, he's a kid. I'll tell him you are not here, but you are here. You just tell him that. You just taught your kid to be a liar. So why why you will blame him to be lying at you tomorrow? Where you been? I was uh, with my friends uh, doing homework. You are a liar too. I mean, if the father is a liar, why the son will not be? So always little mistakes. Maybe you think they are little, but they can turn to be a big problem. So you wanna you wanna have a, a nice future family, successful family. Never compromise with ethics. Start with yourself. Um, as the Bible says, from their fruits, you shall know them, right? Your son is a, is a child. He's honest and he doesn't know. So you are the fruits. You see the, the tree. You are the tree. You are, he, he don't have a fruits yet. He's a kid. So he look at your fruits and your fruits is not a good example. Lying, maybe cheating, maybe etc. So why he want to be... Uh, you know, sometime actually, sometime kids who they are born of a bad parents, they can be way better than their parents, but this is not necessarily the case always, because they have like a reaction in the in the in the cor correct direction. But usually, children will take a lot from their parents, usually, but not in all cases. Yeah, sometimes you will find someone is born from a family, the father was a uh, drunk, he beat the mother, the woman she was a cheating, but then the son is totally different, right? But this is not the case always. And usually those kids, they go through a lot of suffering before they can go in the correct direction. Anyway, I think we have enough for today. I'm not going to keep this video really, but you can cut the part where we are talking about uh, uh, Ishmael is not from, uh, Muhammad is not from Ishmael. All right. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, like what we see from our idiots surrounding us. Idiots. I don't know what you mean by idiots. Excuse my English, Samuel. What do you mean by idiots? Elites. Elites. Sorry. Elites. What elites mean? 
Hold on, let me search it. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, you know, I, I think I, I'm trying to figure it out. Are you are you saying the famous one? Why when you say the elite? Like leaders or etc. Leaders are the last one to be to be followed. They are not leaders. They are there because they are corrupt. You know what I mean? Yeah, they are they are ruling class because they are corrupt. You see, if you are a decent man, you will not be there. They will never even let you get there. And if you get there, they will take you off very fast. Let us say you get there by mistake. <laughs> like let us say, I'm not going to say Trump is the good guy, but compared to the rest, he is very good compared to them. So his he is being there is a mistake for them, trying to correct it. He is, he is not really good, but he is way better than all the scam around. So they will try to take him down as soon as possible. Uh, always the corrupt ones, they will be the class. The class never was the good ones. Never, never. Never think that a class have, you know, like, look around you. I don't need to describe to you. Just look around you. Right? Yeah. The, the good ones have nothing to do with the, what they call them the class. The class, all of them, uh, uh, they are number uh, To be a class, you have to be uh, not honest. You say something you don't believe in. Like me, you know, if in order to make YouTube happy with me, I have to say things I don't agree with. And then they will allow me to collect donation in YouTube. But because I don't, I don't care, you know, I say things as it is. I cannot use go. You know, I mean, all people they have that uh, you know option to collect donation, right? But not for me. YouTube sent me many time many warning, and that's it. You know, you are not, for you know, against our guideline. Blah 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 blah. Okay, your guideline will not make me compromise and be a slave of your money. I know exactly what they want, and I will not do what they want. So they use, they use a donation and the, like the source of income to oppress you. As simple as that. So either you, you know, okay, say, oh, you know, now I can get donation. People they can support me. I have to say speak in different way, etc. I'm not going to do that. I don't care. People they say to me, you say idiot, you say donkey, you say it. I will say it, I don't care. Because this is not the reason for them to stop me from collecting donation. There's way more reasons. I'm making a lot of people angry and they don't like what I do. You know? Make a video about lingerie, about anything, silly. You know, you you will get money. Right. Or support Islam. You will make money. They will never, YouTube, they will never take the account of anyone supporting Islam because he is out of the guideline. Even though they speak about jihad, they speak about, the uh, you know, I mean, teaching hate against the Jews, the Christians, etc. They will never take their video down and they will never stop them from collecting donation. But me... I'm a bad person for them, right? <clears throat> yeah. And actually, that's why I don't keep my videos in my channel. Don't you know this? I can't even keep my video for a few days because they are all over me. Each time my account reach a hundred thousand something, they ban me. If, if I am not getting banned, I should have millions of subscribers by now. Imagine if I have all the videos still in my channel and all the subscribers, they are, I mean, endless number of people. But they will not let you grow. If you are a Muslim and you have two million subscribers, they will never, I mean, all the videos, there's, each one of those videos, they break copyright, they, you know, they, they teach hate speech, speech uh, uh, 
Uh, even they play videos of Al-Qaeda, songs for Al-Qaeda, still they stay there. Can you speak about how to explain to non-English speaking Muslims about the context of the Hadith? You see, the language is not the problem. The problem is the knowledge. So before to explain something to someone, it doesn't matter what the language is, you have to have knowledge. Otherwise, how you explain something, you yourself don't understand. So before, always, before you open your mouth to speak about any topic, you have to educate yourself very well. You know what I mean? And the rest is yours. The rest is you. You have, to, you know, when I talk to a person, I don't have a one method. I speak to the person depending on who is he. You know what I mean? Sometimes you speak to a nice person, polite, uh, respectful. So you have to speak to him in a manner where he deserves what he deserves. If a person is rude, I will teach him how to be nice. So whoever you want to talk to, you have to examine the person first, his equality, his background, education, and then you can determine how you speak to the person. So there's not the, it's not like, you know, we have a, we are going to make a cake and the, and the size is four by four. You cannot do that. Every person is different. Every person have his own shoes like Cinderella. You know what I mean? So you have to treat a person, every person as Cinderella. People are different. Humans are different. They think differently. They receive differently. They get upset easy or fast. You have to find out what kind of person you are speaking to. Um, all right. Anything else, guys? Yeah, for, you know, freedom of speech. There's nothing is called really freedom of speech. I mean, it's relative. Like in USA, you know, like you can tell that so we are moving in toward a perfectly correct. Like now, they are taking statues, you know, like there's a city now in USA have no police, you believe it? I mean, crazy people. So now what happened? If somebody attacks somebody, you call who? They created a department, it's called Avoid Violence Department. <laughs> the city is going to go crazy, that's right. I mean, those people, and actually, you know what? I believe that sometimes doing stupid things is the best way to know that you are stupid you know what I mean so soon those people who they dismantle the police in their city they will find out how stupid they are just wait when all the criminals will go to that city because now this is a heaven of, of, uh, for, for, for the criminals <laughs> there's no police that's it you do whatever you want I mean crazy people liberals you know liberalism you see the word liberal it's it sound good but when you examine those who live in this country and they are liberals, you find that they are taking hashish. You know what I mean? They are taking hashish. <sighs> yeah. Can you explain chapter 66, 1 to 5? Is it about Maria or honey? My friend, do you think really God will make a verse about eating honey? I mean, isn't it the Quran says honey have uh, uh, like benefit from it? So, uh, you know, the story is about Maria. And even the Muslims agree in their books it says about Maria. And why the Quran did not say it's about honey? If it's about honey and what the prophet he forbid forbid himself from drinking honey and then Allah he made a chapter or or verses about it <laughs> what kind of God he is involved with the food you want to eat in your kitchen as an individual and there is no single hadith says that the prophet he ordered or forbid honey that's false actually he ordered people to drink honey all the time Yeah, that's why we say, uh, you know, talking about compromising, 
the second you start compromising you will you will you will, you will keep going compromising forever I remember when Obama was a president they start saying uh, happy holiday I say Merry Christmas happy Easter they say happy holiday I say happy Easter you know you like it you don't like it it's happy Easter so I don't care who is the president Trump come Obama go who care never compromise Never say what they like you to say. Say what you believe is the right thing to say. Right? Uh, actually, this is my problem with many people, you know. Even when I start teaching about Islam, many Christians, they go against me. You are not, you know, um, you know, you are not being kind. The Bible orders to be kind. And then I start quoting for them Jesus, you know, saying the son of snakes, uh, surf, you know, the, the son of uh, the, the snake, the, 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 shit, the Satan, the hypocrite, all, all those words used by Jesus. So how come Jesus, our Lord, he can use it? We cannot use it. Hypocrisy. So they want you to be uh, without teeth, you know, and they, all of them, they quote for you. If somebody hit you and you are cheek, giving the other one. That's it. This is the only verse they knew in the Bible, just to, to make you, but this verse is not really what it's meant to them. The Bible teaches not to be evil, not to fight evil by evil, beating a person who, who did beat you is not going to fix the problem call the police in the time of the roman there was a law if somebody beat you in the other cheek in this cheek you go to jail if you put in the other cheek no it might be fine law but this is the law so use the law use the law there's a judge there's a government there's a police but in order uh, to control you and to make you subdued to the devil they try sometimes even to use the word of God to make you no one you know I told you before uh, you know since I was very young I have a hobby of guns I like guns I like weapons so we go, you know, Christians, we go hiking. And, you know, they always like complain, why you have your gun with you? Aren't you Christian like us? You know, they make like, I mean, they, they, they say it even to insult you. And I say, I like guns. What's your problem? You know, don't carry guns. I like guns. We are going in the wilderness. And why I will not carry gun, my gun with me? And, you know, one day we were going in the, in the middle of nowhere. And I start hearing the sound of the beast, the wolves, whoa, you know, and they get terrified, get so scared. And, you know, it's getting dark, and then we start seeing the eyes of, of those wolves. You know, if you don't know about, like, uh, if you've never been in the desert or going hunting, uh, animals who eat meat in, at night, their eyes reflect like a green, or let us say, shiny uh, green. The one who eat grass, their eyes red. The reflection will be red. This is how you know if this is a beast or it is maybe a goat, you know? So the second we they start hearing the sounds of those animals and they start seeing their eyes at night, suddenly all of them, they start saying, you have your gun with you, right? Is your gun with you? What happened to those people? They were making fun of me all the time. Why you carry your gun? Why you have guns with you? We are Christians, we should not carry guns. Who said if you are a Christian, you cannot carry a gun? Where do you get this from? So they, 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 they have, they've been taught that we as a Christians, to be a Christian is to be a person who don't carry a gun. That's false. Jesus himself, I said to them, isn't Jesus says the one who don't have a sword, go on by one? This is where he says that. They never heard of the verse. Because what they hear in the church, Jesus says, the one who beat you, give him the other cheek. 
So the second they start hearing those animals, they get terrified. Suddenly, all of them, they are holding me from my both hands. I got even, okay, we know, hold on. Stop holding my hands. If I get it close to us, how I can shoot them? I can't even move. You know, they, 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 you know, like they are terrified. And then they said, you have your gun with me, right? I said, yeah, but I have one bullet. They said, what? One bullet only? Why you carry the gun with one bullet? I was joking. What one bullet? Why you carry a gun with one bullet? I said, what I will do? You guys, you don't like guns. So I carry the gun with one bullet. <laughs> one bullet. <laughs> so they were, I mean, at, at that moment, I was really happy because I showed them how stupid they are all those years. They are making fun of me carrying a gun. Now you need it. Now you need it. You know, and you should see them around me like they are like, a, you know, like chickens. Suddenly the wolves who are saying, we do not need guns. We, you know, what happened to that big guy who don't need guns? You know, suddenly you have your gun with you, right? You have your gun with you, right? I said, yeah, but I have one bullet. One bullet only? What? what, 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 what? I said, yeah, my gun, I call it, can take one bullet. <laughs> to save myself. <laughs> so anyway, you know, people, they, uh, they have their own way of understanding things and they think they are the smart one. And sometimes, and this is, will be a good lesson for us, sometimes everybody go around you, doesn't mean you are wrong. As those people, all of them they are against me. Which should convince me that I'm wrong. But why I'm wrong? Why if I carry a gun, I'm wrong? I never harm anyone. It's not guns who kill. It is the one who is using it if you want to kill you can kill by a knife by a, by a stone by a rock by by a, a, a by a car not necessarily a gun if you are a criminal you can kill even by your hands naked hands if you are strong so uh, they you know they even they are Christians they are nice people they are kind but they grow in a society they've been told that we as a Christians, we should not carry guns, which uh, for me, I grew in a family, different kind of family. You know, carrying guns is, is fun. It's like a gift when you're a kid, they give you a gun. You know, we have different, uh, we grow up in different kind of family. But always people, they try to put pressure on you and the pressure sometimes it might make you think that you are wrong even though you are not so don't listen to them think about what you do carefully and you should be able to find out if it's wrong or not so if you carry a gun carry it legally get a license for it don't commit a crime and don't hurt people you know guns exist for a reason and that reason should be used only to defend yourself never hurt people never kill people and don't use it unless you have no choice except to use it and that's it you're fine there will be a criminal you know yeah uh, yeah don't carry a gun without legal permit because then you will go to jail and you know i mean what uh, why you want to do that you know you have to be smart and here in usa you know you can you get the license you can carry many guns not only one you can carry five, six, seven guns. Who cares? It's just one license. <clears throat> anyway, you have to find out, like in your town, how the law is. And uh, actually, having guns at in, in, you know, you see, the worst city in USA is Chicago. The worst city. A lot of killing happened there. Why? Citizens are not allowed to have guns. Criminals, they can have it. So, when you forbid the good ones from having guns, you are giving permission to the bad ones to take over. Where I live, if you are a thief, if you are a criminal, you go inside the house, 99% you will not get out alive. Because everybody have guns, women have guns. You are not the only one have one. You know what I mean? So, it's more it's way more safe society from a society there's no guns in it because the only one have gun either the criminal or the police the police they need at least five to ten minutes to arrive by the time they arrive you are dead 
The criminals, they have their guns. So you say to the good citizen, you cannot have guns, but the bad citizen, they have all the guns they want. This is why you see always in, in, in the states which is run by liberals, they have way more crimes than other states. You know, let us, let us say like you want to go uh, 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 in a state where everybody carry guns, you know, with him. And you want to, like, like this guy here, the terrorist. The second you say, I want to kill you, Allahu Akbar, you will be shish kebab. Because everybody have guns. But if you go to a state where, like in England, in England, nobody can have guns. So the citizen cannot protect himself, and the criminals, they can kill you. Stupidity. Right? So for me, you know, I support that every citizen should have guns at home. But just have be sure that you are not giving it to a crazy person. You can make like an exam to see how stable he is, check his credit, uh, you know, to see that to be sure that you are not giving it to, to a crazy person who will start using it left and right. But having 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 guns can make more safe security, safe society actually. It's not the opposite. All right. All right. I think we have enough for today. Now, what we would do with this video? This video became long, and I wanted to talk about Ishmael, etc. So, if you download the video, you have to cut the part speaking about, and you stop from the time we stop talking about Ishmael. If you like to download it. And as I know, you know, I don't keep my videos for long. Um, as a lawyer, you had a permit to have protect yourself. Okay. Well, here you don't have to be a lawyer. You can have it wherever you want. You can have. There's a there's a guy he used to come to uh, uh, to my chat room once this guy he uh, you know we were talking about guns so he said do you want to see what i have I said sure i mean this guy he have like <laughs> i don't know i was like what do you have there man the guy he have m16 he have i mean i have ak-47 clashing cough i mean this guy he have a, this is not right for me i don't believe this is right i mean why you need to have all those guns i told him why you why you why you need them this is a lot. This is not for one person. This is just for somebody when I go to for war. You know, uh, what you need is just something to protect yourself, um, and don't waste your money. You know, because too much weapon and you will not need it anyway. It's a waste of money. If you have extra money, give it to the poor. All right. Anyway, I want to say thank you guys for being here. I will change the timing for a broadcast tomorrow. I will make it Monday. Um, because tomorrow is Sunday, so it's not right. I don't want to talk about Muhammad in Sunday. So I will hide this topic here. I will recreate the topic again later for Monday. All right. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And I hope we have a good time. I pray that all of us we will be safe with this corona and all the evil things around us in our life. We pray for your family, your children, for your beloved one, and even the one who hate us. We pray for the Muslims to be healthy, to be to live in peace, and we pray for all the Christians who they are under discrimination to be safe and secure from the hands of the evil ones. We leave you with peace, and the peace of the Lord will be with you always. Thank you, and God bless you. Take care.